I don't know how to do it. Oh, God. Oh, what's that on deck? Oh, God, how do I make it smaller? Oh, my God. Just, just, uh, I'll just leave uh, it like that and just put them. Yeah, there. but you won't be able to see your comments. Yeah, put the comments up, that's what I'm saying now. Uh, yeah, I don't saying. know how to get that off. Get it off. I don't know how to do it. You're daft. I swear I don't. You don't know how to do it. I swear down, I do not know what, how to get these banners off. I've never used this, have I? Shut up, Eli. I mean, wolf. <laughs> No, I haven't got a clue. Oh, there. Banners. Right, banners. Yeah. Right, so we want to... How do we get rid of it? Hide. That's it. No more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I said after Easter to everyone, didn't I? Yeah, but we've already got an after Easter. Open that thing for us. What? I'm going to bust it. I'll bust you in a minute. Oh, yeah. This <sighs> is bullying me again, say. Just push your finger into it. That's it. We'll wait for a few commands, 11 on. Don't forget to push the like buttons, guys. One minute, 16 seconds. Happy Easter, everyone. Watch the Ben Chua, Judah Ben Chua, uh, Charlton Heston. Absolutely brilliant again. Only the lonely one, two, three is at the bottom. Freedom again in the speech. Freedom again in there. Freedom again. Only the lonely. Uh, Come and stream line. Yeah. Graham Smith. Are you Graham? Are you okay, brother? Even by the limit. You said, yeah, we're okay. Just a little bit stiff. I, I went to go to the to pump the tire up. I've got a bit of a flat tire. <clears throat> and I haven't been able to get to the, the bigger garage to take it. So I just went to Tesco's, got to put a card on 50 pence. But I'm going to try to put the thing in the yeah, so and put it in there and bend over for ages. About 15 fucking minutes, I thought, what's happening? Nothing happened. It went off, went back on, put another 50 pence in. Three times, did it three times. When you got about 15 pounds, 20 pounds of pressure, let me, let me tell you. Absolute rubbish, them, them, them in Tesco's. They're a complete rip off. Every single one I've bought, and you never wear properly. The best ones at the top, in Goodwood Barbie, they've got the proper up to date one. These are they're old fashioned garbage, they are. Uh, he's the uh, wolf, and yeah, he's just at the back. Now he's just heard his dad, so he's been crying a little bit. And they've been on stairs, so I've been sneezing a bit with both of them. Oh, sorry, we so like been up, he's been down, so we haven't learned to go upstairs yet. The, the, the pup, so instead of been running him down, because dogs pee in the house now with the only baby. So I always have my dogs. What I do is, until they're about a year old, then I start taking them up, or maybe a little, maybe 10 months old. Then I start learning them. So if anyone's got a dog, it's a great idea because what they do when the pups stitch you all the fucking furniture and everything. So if you don't learn them to get up the stairs, they, they don't get up. So you won't come up because you don't know how to get up. Where all the other dogs have had have weed and chewed upstairs the beds and fucking ruined your wallpaper, ruined your walls, scratching doors. Eli wrecked the house when we got him. So if you don't let them go up the stairs, even put a baby, baby gate on if you can. But I wouldn't let them up the stairs. So in that way, no, they, they, especially if you've got a fire or anything and, and you're out and you leave them in the house, say, and they're in the house running downstairs, they're, they're, they're all right. So it's, it's bad if there's a fire upstairs. They run, there's a fire, they run upstairs and get burned. But they're on their own. They're always looked after. Bobby's always with them. Or I'm with them. Or Emma's with them. We have 23 on. Everything okay, everyone? Hope you've had a great uh, Easter dinner today. Hope you've had a good time. People have indulged. There's no problem with that. Few have come on and said, I've slipped up. No, everyone's entitled to have a drink. Everyone's entitled to have a bit of this, that, and the other. You're not all monks. And people work hard. They're, like, they're, they're entitled to have let the hair down, enjoy themselves over the Easter. That's why it's called the Easter holiday. And that's what they drink and maybe go merry and things like that. So, but if you drink and you're one of these people have one drink and you least have fucking 20, 30 drinks, you can't fall off the wagon because you end up being ill, really seriously ill. Freedom on all. De, de, de. Peter the Box, are you, son? I'm okay, but yeah, I am. Happy Easter to you, too. Yeah, so yeah, uh, the idiot, we won't be calling Chucky Dog, he, he sent me about 30 different things. You get in jail, you get in this. I just was, I've just been going delete, 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 delete. So I'm not even answering him back now. So he comes on tonight and I see him. I'll just I'll tell you, Tim, straight away. But I apologize to the lad who was on last night because I got it wrong. 
by the time I pointed to it, we took the wrong one off. So it was it was the one underneath. It wasn't the big lad, it was the bodybuilder lad. It wasn't there and I apologised to him today. I said, sorry, mate, it was just a mistake. We've had that much carry on with that idiot. I got you, you were that close to him. When we pointed the finger to it, it was just, it was on the, you were just underneath him. But it was a, a rectifying. If you're in the wrong, you've just got your hands up, don't you? And just say, oh, apologise. Seems a really nice lad as well. Uh, the, the big lad who was a talk was last night. Seems a nice kid. So you don't want nice people like that thinking you're rude or being obnoxious or whatever. You, you, you just put your hands up and say, look, it was just a mistake. And he accepted it, so it's great. But when you do that with that idiot, Chucky Dog, uh, you can't, he, he won't accept you an apology or nothing. He's fucking mentally deranged. So he's putting up again today. You're getting arrested on there. Uh, you're getting arrested on the second, but not the second, which is the three weeks. When he said three weeks ago, coming up on the second, that he was going to get, he's got the police on and he's been talking to police officers and he's been talking there. Uh, Ray Morton was an ex police officer who was involved with the murder squad with Lee Duffy. And he's been talking to another police officer there. And he's been lazy on saying that cockerel. The police have said we've got that much on him. We've got a six and a half hours of video footage. So you don't need, need a magistrate. You can't be the magistrate six and a half fucking hours looking through footage, you fucking dim bat. So all your daft little scare tactics don't bother me. I've been up for fucking two attempts of the murders on police. I've been up for armed robberies, kidnapping, shootings, and fucking all sorts. So you really think I'm bothered about a fucking a so called bogus. A fake account when you're texting me on. Now, if I, somebody, somebody texts me on me, I say Freedom Texas, Timmy Smith, and I go, fuck you, Freedom, I know it's you, stop fucking about. I, I, he can't then go to the police on me. He said, Brian's threatened to beat me up because he's texted under Timmy Smith, right? His real name's Freedom. So if it came off Freedom, I'd text back Freedom, I'm going to smash your face and Freedom when I get you. Just hypothetically, hypothetically, Freedom's thinking, what the fuck about <laughs> Anyway. So, yeah, just ignore the full, exactly, that's spot on, only the lonely. So that's what I'm doing, because he's been, what Teddy Little Dicko said, and another great friend of mine who's a millionaire, um, that's what I would said, he's trying to poke you, so you'll react like you did when he threatened Emma, and you went, no, fucking, if you come to my fucking house, when you bounce, I'll fight bounce with bounce, and that's why I got nicked. Uh, yeah, he should be ashamed, mate. He should be ashamed. I mean, if that was me, look at that, that lad last night, I felt so embarrassed when I looked at it later, I looked at the poor lad. Fucking, you know what I mean? My head was fucking battered a bit. But he come on, he was lovely. Really nice lad. And he accepted your apology, and that's what you do. So the idiot said, I'm getting arrested again. So today I went, I, I just sent it to a harassment thing, and it went. Anyway, this YouTube took it off. I thought, oh, this is fucking easy, because I was what I was doing before was blocking them. And I didn't realise that Freedom taught me, and Emma taught me, if you block them or hide in the channel, you can hide other people who are fucking on your channel. Oh, a nightmare so i found a way now where you can just report it to youtube and the youtube channel take it off for harassment type of thing but i thought i can't be asked talking to him i can't be asked fucking even bothering about him you know just, i just want to get on with my fucking life and get it over so i'm supposed to be getting arrested not tomorrow the next day well if it isn't the next tomorrow or the next day the three weeks are up so how stupid are you going to look we know you're watching every single thing we do and he keeps saying he's got six and a half hours of footage to the place and and the cop said to him well, do you know what we're getting at? And he went, no. He said, we only had one hour in Royal Moat. Seriously, Royal Moat. How can you how can you even compare me to Royal Moat who murdered three innocent people and a police and innocent policeman and innocent girl, girlfriend he went off and a karate instructor and then went on a rampage robbing people all over with armed robberies. The biggest, uh, I think he was one of the most wanted man in Great Britain. They had fucking fighter jets and everything looking for him in fucking Newcastle way, or that way in the woods. They had him, even he came in, um, Ray Mears. They brought him in as a fucking load to, to see where he was living. He was in a drain pipe, a storm drain, I think it was, and he shot himself and Gazza even went up there. So how can you refer him? He started to set us right there, that's what he's doing. And that's all there. So I knew the police were involved in, in, in investigating the officer. I'm going to send most of the stuff off now. Which is when, when when you see it when it comes out, you're gonna make a Billy Billy go throw up the things that he's saying. You're absolutely, you could a normal human being. That's why we know he's mentally insane. A normal human being wouldn't even think like this. Never mind say it. And if you did say it, you'd never ever show your face again. You'd, you'd be devastated. You would be saying what you did. But when normal people see this, what he's been doing for over four years, this has been going on. 
Yeah, he made up. Uh, yeah, you're right. He, 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 good point there. There, freedom. What he did with one lad was Dale Brendan Hyde. Dale was a book author, and he did a book. And because Dale was in the book, the very first Paul Sykes book, and it was just a, a little bit in the bottom because he was the one who actually showed the so-called Chucky doll the fake author how to do books and how to do this and the other. And Dale caught got cancer really bad. So then Dale said, I can't work with yeah, the fake author. He's telling me how to write books. I'm an author. And he said, he's a fucking nobody. He can't even type. So he said, I can't work with him. So he said, Rob Brenton said, well, I'm going to keep your name in the book because you did all the hard work and you did all you, what, what you had to do and that. He said, but uh, I'm going to miss you and all that stuff. So anyway, the, the parted way, no problem, Rob Brenton with him. So then he started texting. He said, oh, hello. My name's um, Milo Box, M-I-L-O. If you look under Emma Cockley, you'll see this. I know you believe me, but if you watch, you'll see the screenshots of the deal, Brendan Hyde. So he says, uh, hello, it's me, uh, Lisa Grayson from My Low Books. I'm just wanting to know if you would like to be interested in doing a book with me. I've done books on Pop Debrick with me and Paul Debrick, who was a friend of mine. So he's pinching our friends' names to use. Um, and, he's, and he's saying, as he's, if he's a woman, Lisa Grayson, then he goes, ha, ah, like that. And you went, well, what were you going to do? Rape her as well. Absolutely insanity. All that must have took days and days and days to put all that together. Just to do that to deal. And what are you going to do? Rape me, rape me. He was a rapist and everything. Absolutely mentally insane. Thank my order to you. Okay, brother. I hope you had a good time with your family the other day, son. Oh, of course, I'll give you some pointers. Give you some pointers, loads, loads of pointers. The main thing is this attitude's got to be 100%. Your body's got to be 100% fit, but your brain's got to be a 1 million percent fucking 100% totally focused on the fight. Not like I'll have a night off, I'll have this. When you're feeling trained for a fight, you say you've got six weeks to train. Them six weeks you train every day, you get there, and then you're ready on the you have to come two or three days off before the fight, and then you're ready. You don't fucking uh, train. Couple of days before you see rest of two or three days and then go to the fight fully fit. But the main thing in, in fighting, I used to always say this I can't be beat, I won't be beat, and I refuse to be beat. And you keep saying it and saying it and saying it over and over again. And when you get to the fight, you've got people in the car with you driving you. you go, Who did you beat? And we'll go through all the top fights you'd beat in the North East and all the people you'd beat all over the country. Remember, you beat them. How can you? You can't be beat. Come on, you can do this. And you keep, you get somebody in your corner shouting that. And you get there and you fucking highs a kite and you look oh, like come on you then you get you don't really rev yourself up in a ring because if you rev yourself up you, your adrenaline kicks in that's one of the main things you've got not to do get you know like where you you've got to control yeah control your your adrenaline because that adrenaline goes up you've only got about two minutes and you spend because after throwing your punches with the adrenaline that's a warning system to your body like it's fight or flight so if that adrenaline kicks in you might as well just give up because your stamina, your stamina just goes within a couple of minutes. But it's a warning signal to either run away or fight. So you've got to go in there nice, calm. You don't see fighters going in going, I'm going to fucking kill them. I don't know all that before the fight. But when they're in the ring, they're calm, cool, collective, and thinking like that. You've got to, every fight's like a game of chess. You might fight a boxer. You might fight a bear. You might fight some like a bear. I'll fight like myself. So you're thinking, fuck, he's fucking huge. He's going to grab me. So you, you're going to have to be able to learn to grapple with somebody my, 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 my type of strength, which is very fucking hard to do. When I was in my prime, <coughs> but yeah, yeah. So I'm been posting some through weeks. P.S. Anyone policemen sent? It's Emma, little monkey. Be you know, you Guess you're not going to do it, are you? But say what? Anything. No, no, it's all getting done with you. No, we're going here about. It's all yours. Yeah. Just talking about the stuff for deal. I don't worry about what you've already got. No, it's terrible. So you're pretending to be a lady. Vile. At least you're vile. Yeah, you're vile. Yeah, you're, you're, a normal human being wouldn't think like what to pretend to be a woman. And then after the bomb, maybe it took them maybe two or three, two days to do all this big massive carry on thing whatever you've done all that time wasting energy could have been with your family helping your family but no you'd rather sit there off your head on that brown shite you come on calling people on drugs saying me and we were on drugs when we were out and he says i'm on drugs every night well if i'm on drugs every night why are my eyes perfectly normal why am i not sweating like a pig 
why do I, why do I look, why are my functions, everyone asks me a question. If I take coke, me, when I took it, I'd be paranoid to fuck, I'd, say, I'd have a bit. And I'd be like, oh, I can't believe it was out, out there. I, that's what I was like on it in the end, it was horrible. I've never had it for five years on the 22nd of September, coming up, and it keeps going. Have you been taking drugs again? Are you back on the pipe? No, I'm not back on the pipe. You've never been off it. You've never been off it since you were 15. Mr. T. Biscuit 78. Hello, brother. Yeah, we'll have a speak. We'll get, get your number hanging on. So we'll, we'll, we'll go through it with you, mate. No problem with that. <coughs> I'm not sure. I'll have to have a look first, mate. Stamina, I don't know. I'm not gonna have you doing that with it, it's gonna be dangerous. I called a good fight earlier in the BFC. I can't remember what now. No, it's not what I'm going to run for. Yeah, your health's more important though. You can't fucking fight if you're gonna have a fucking if you if your heart's not right, if it's dodgy. There's no way you can go in the ring, they wouldn't let you go in the ring because what happens is People don't know this. You have to have a. What happens is they have the first. They have the first aid there. The St John's ambulance people, and they'll test you and have a doctor to test your heart and everything. If you if you've got anything wrong, like your blood pressure's too high, to stop the fight. I remember my my mate Bram. We did a paid homage to two young lads. I'll tell you about them later. So there's no rush. So there were two. There was, they went to school together. So they were five year old. Then they went from the infants to the juniors. Then went from the juniors. They went in the army cadets at 12, 13 year old each. But we were only about three, six months apart. So then they went into the army when they were at night 18, I think it was. Not 16, I think it was. And they went to, one went to Afghanistan and he was shot by a sniper. And a week later, the other one was in Iraq and he got shot by a sniper. So both of them got killed within a week of each other. Absolutely tragic. From Doncaster, Gary, Gary, Gary Clark, who was from uh, Blue Wall. It was his family. So me and Bram said, no. We'll do, do the so he Gary did the fight and Brown was going to fight. But the lad Brown was going to fight, it was tested his heart and his blood pressure was through the roof. He, but we think he took speed deliberately to not fight and it fucked the fight up. So, but anyway, I had to do I had to do a speech in the ring anyway. There was a lad there who goes all over the country when he goes in the ring, goes hey, and he does, let's get ready to fight and all that shit. So he's there, he went, I don't know who the fuck's that big last if lad there. He said, That's Brian Cox. Is that Brian Cockley went? Okay, now they told me he was big, he's fucking ridiculous. He said, I've had to lift the ring thing. You know the ring when you get in the ring? I've had to push my foot down the bottom, pull him out, and he couldn't get through. It was, that, it was that thick his back. He couldn't get under the ring. It was that big. Okay, now he's been seeing the size of his traps. I was in the ring and I was sitting there saying, listen, I'm here today to pay homage to Bird, 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 so I think it's called. Stephen Bird, so I think it's called. Stephen Birdsell, who was in the app, told us what I just told you. I said, and as we are standing here tonight, uh, we're not going to mourn his death, we're going to celebrate his death and his, and his friend. And I just said, we don't realise how much these army people put their life on the line. They walk on a walk on a crack, boom, blow up. They walk on a slate, a bullet hits them. They're not, they're not just putting their life on the line for our country and for us and our freedom and our liberty. They're there for our children as well. They're stopping people coming from this country like terrorists. And they're doing these things, what they're doing. They're getting fucking pendants and people are calling them. People are calling like Wayne Rudy, a hero. And their top footballs are a hero. And Tyson Fury, here and Mike Tyson are heroes. No, they're not fucking heroes. They're real heroes. And our service men and women who are in Afghanistan and Iraq and all around the world fight for our country. And the service nurses and service doctors and service um, ambulance drivers, all them people are abroad helping our country all them years. And they did it for 12 years. 12 years that war went on. And what happened when they come on? They got the sack. 60,000 troops we had. And when they come back, Tony Blair sacked 40,000. There's only 20,000 troops we've got. How the fuck are we going to go to war with Japan? I mean, the Chinese. When I was over China, the so military style, they're all the people. And they're, they're lovely people, they're all, they're all polite and everything, but the fucking, they've got something like, I think it was 5 million troops, and they've got another 10 million, they have 15 million ready, they could have 20 million troops if they want. They've got, what was it they've got now? Is it 3.5 billion people, I think it is, in China, or 4 billion. I think there's 8, eight close to 8, there's 8 billion on the planet, 7.5 billion, something like that. They've got about 3 billion, I think. 
So how, how the fuck are you going to go to war with a country who's got 50, 20 million troops? We've got we've got 20,000. <laughs> it's fucking insanity, isn't it? You've no chance. And they, they don't give in. They just don't give in. They'll just keep fighting and fighting and fighting. So I'll tell the story about Stephen Baird. So that was his name. And uh, he was only 21 year old and both were killed. One was Afghanistan, one was Iraq. So Gary's family came. America. Huh? Been, been a real bad staff in America. All right. Um, so he he gave his life. You can't give any more than that, can you? To your country. What, for £300 a week or something? £400 a week? Fucking joke with these footballs are on £250, £400,000, half a million pounds a week. Heroes. Seriously. Are you having a joke? Fucking joking. Yeah, pretty sparring, pretty sparring, footwork, headwork, all, all sorts you've got to learn. Foot, the most important thing is like your fitness has got to be up. You've got, if you've got that many things you've got to do, it's discipline. <coughs> I only have to train six weeks if I'm fine someone and I'm ready. Six weeks. I damn well super thing anyway. Last night I did two hundred and I I needed just under three hundred reps, I got two hundred and sixty five reps. I couldn't get any fucking more. I was completely collapsed on the bed from doing their side laterals. Front of that was via delts and stuff. My shoulders are fucking chock, I'm full of the brim of blood. I'm starting to that punch the egg in here straight away, start to come back, I bang. I couldn't do that before, there was no power in my punch, it was just like a little fucking girl. Now it's coming back. You won the battle, bro. Got in the game. <coughs> yeah, it's all, it's all in your head. Fear, see, what you've got to do is do not let fear creep in. That's the worst thing you can do. Do not think, oh, oh, you speak for people. I haven't put that. Oh, he's won 27 fights. I've had people, I've had, I've had like people who had 200 fights and won every fight. And then I've jumped in and just strike him in about three or four punches. It's nothing to do with that. You've got to have loads of people where they've never been beaten in their town, say like Red Car, Sunderland Way, um, Newcastle Way, all over the from place for people, Darlington, Red Car. South Bank from Grange Town, all over the place, fighting people, <coughs> Stockton, all over the place. And it's not <coughs> their ability you worry about, it's your own ability. So you just use your own ability to win the fight. And you just keep going, and I can't be beat, I won't be beat, I refuse to be beat. I just keep saying that, and you're ending your brainwash yourself in that situation. But if you're not training and you're not fit, you're not going to win. Take a look at Mike Tyson when he was absolute unbelievable. He's winning every every it wasn't one and a half minutes his fights were over usually in the, in the first round. He was knocking him up, knocking him with the left two right up a cut. They were gone in the first round. When he fought Buster Douglas, he went, It's like saying Manchester United when they're at the best or Liverpool at the best. Or Tony Bournemouth. Or Tony fucking Scunthorpe, but he's a great one. So you should, if you have the complacency, you know, if you think, oh, it's just them. You can't think like that. That's when he did he thought Tony Buster Douglas, I'll easy beat him. He was 40, 40 to one. To beat Tyson, and now would have put a million pound billion. If I had a billion pound, I'd have put it on Tyson to win, and he got fucking beat. He got caught. Big, big uh, Marine he was, Buster Douglas. And what had happened, you didn't know. He had the Lord Jesus in his corner. He was a Christian. And his man was dying on the bed about six weeks before the fight, or maybe two weeks, maybe. I'm not sure how many weeks it was. And she said, Win, win for me. So she said, Let out to him. So he, he had down in his head. That my mum, my mum, my mum, so you know yourself, you fight for your family. That was his mum's that last dying breath. I win for me, she said. I feel like Rocky, remember when he's you remember? I also remember, I also say that fucking council said they saying it. Remember, I'd be a bit posh. <laughs> remember when Rocky was in the film and she wouldn't give him because his brain had a bit of his brain was a bit knackered, I think there was something wrong with him. Or his eye was bad rep type touch right now. And she then she went, I win, I want you to win. And you started being a total different person. So you, you've got to have a great, you've got to have a great, somebody in your corner really good, keep you going up and you've also got to have somebody in your house, you know, doing stuff for you, cooking, cleaning, washing, all that shit. Yeah, please. So yeah, then the 10 two lads died, but all the lads came. The whole place, it was in Middlesbrough where they used to have the, uh, the, I don't know if the army cadet space is still there. It was shocking with the army lads and all the other ones come off the sergeants and all that were on the top. They were speaking with the mic and they were all clapping like mad. And uh, 
and we're all going, yeah, and we're all going, these, you're the real heroes. And we're shouting, well, the use up here, you the heroes, the, the use ones with the medals on, you're the real heroes. Not people like Brian Cockrell, not people like such and such, not people like them. I'm not a fucking hero. You're the heroes. You all stood there. I haven't stood with a man throwing punches at me. You all stood in a fire with his tanks dropping bombs on you and fucking machine guns and landmines and snipers and fucking airplanes bombing them and fucking helicopters and all sorts. You're the real people. You're the real heroes. Not fucking people who can have a bit of a fist fight. They're not heroes. And they said there was a nurse. Absolutely amazing woman. She, she was in there. Oh, 13 days she wouldn't go up. She was in there, people were like being blown up, bombed and everything. Put them back together, arms on the legs on all that. And she was bombed about five or six times at the hospital. She nearly, nearly got killed. She what a woman she was there. Uh, what a lady she was. I can't remember her name, but she was absolutely she was a doctor, um, surgeon. Fucking unbelievable. I think the most of us would just run out the fucking house. When you said bombs start coming on, you know, she'd shit yourself out the door, don't give a fuck who you are. You'd think, fuck that, I'm not staying there getting bombed. She stayed in, and they were only fucking flimsy buildings. But they were in. They weren't fucking like concrete or out. Be careful, contact. If he went on or he accepts. Yeah, but the thing you've got to do, I told you, told you, you can't go in the ring without getting the, your eyes tested. I mean, you've got to have, you've got to be tested, even in bare knuckle fighting, you know, they test you and they test your heart and your lungs and everything. You've got to be tested before you go in. So you're in amateur boxing, you've got to have a certificate, I've got to have a box, only have a box the once. That wasn't for me because I like, I like to be in fast and fucking fighting. And in amateur boxing, I want you to like one stand in one corner and just box like that. But I want to be in with my head down, fucking throwing bombs. Kept getting me up the referee in the fight, brought me up again. I went, Fucking hell! And he went, He put me, got me hands, put them on the ropes. He went, One, he, he, he took, took, uh, he took a round off me when I took a round off me for swearing. I was fucking free, 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 raging. And then the other lad hit me with a good left hook jab, and I caught the right hand, and he, he dropped, and I threw it right up, of course. Caught him on the chin, he went back into the ropes, and I was on the ropes, throwing loads of punches. Anyway, he come back and he started jabbing me with loads of good, good jabs, and I knew I got beat. Um, Two rounds to one got beat. Well, yeah, he was a nice lad, like black lad from. Um, he was a bit like Mace, Gary Mason. He looked like him type of build, big massive lump of a lad from Leeds. Rough, rough lad. He came over, cuddled me all that. Me, me, like, well done, all that. You know, you do that when you have a fight. Uh, love Indian in Gisborough. Jimmy White, are you right, Jimmy? Jimmy's from Blackpool. Great friend of. Uh, Kevin, Kevin Brown was a great lad. Kevin Brown went to court for it with us. He was here, Kevin, when we took him to court. And he, he, he even denies us the fucking... He even denies that we took him to court, pretending he won the court case. How the fuck can he win the court case when the judge gave him a contempt of court for, for recording the fucking explicit courtroom here? I got all the letters to put them all up. And they went, oh, they're all doctors. Well, if they're doctored then, why don't you, Chucky Doll, go to the place and say, look, you're doctoring letters, I'll go to the court. You'd have filled the courts up. And the courts would have done me for Dr. Letters. You're not allowed to doctor letters in the courtroom, uh, Crown Court um, case. It was a civil case in the county court, but the Crown Court judges were resigned over it because everywhere was shut in Great Britain. All the all the magistrates that were shut and the big Crown Court, you are only allowed three people. And so what the judges decided to do, the Crown Court judges thought, why well, don't we get rid of all the civil cases? And we'll do it, and it's called the BT meet. So you go on the phone. Brian Cockrell, that goes, Brian Cockrell's out of the conference, and then they'll say them, Tony Jones, uh, Andy Smith, and they'll go, Andy Smith out of the conference. And the judge just, just goes, be right, it's ready. I right, know one today, recordings or, or anything of the courtroom hearing. He only, his wife only recorded the full courtroom hearing. So that was January, the first day I went up was January, and Judge Cook said, we can't take the court there, Mr. Cockrell, because then companies they've got a lot of real companies, they're not in companies' house. I said, What does that mean? He said, Well, they're not an entity, that therefore it's not an entity. I said, You mean it's fraud? He went, Well, it is, yes, fraud, fraudulent, because they haven't been paying tax for the last seven, eight years, I think it was. So then he turned around and said, And you can't take Ch Chucky in and Rob Brenton to court, and you can't take Warcry Publishing, Warcry Press, because they're not an entity. 
as of today, you can't sue the two people, you can only sue the company. So they went, oh, we've still got another company called Rubik's. You had another one called Rubik's Fan the Flames. So Rubik's was like an umbrella company where you can, it's like an umbrella company, say that there's two companies there. You use them, and that's like an umbrella company over the top of them that you can use. It's legal as well, but it's like just legal. So they've done that. So the judge amended the the paper and put on, took, took it all off, and took Brent off, took Walker I put Walker I press, and he put put it back on the fake author uh, and the company, and I think it was uh, Rubik's. So they had to then give me 21 days. He was given notice to give me full disclosure, and he hadn't done that. So I had to go back to court anyway. We weren't in court. We were, we were just at home on his phones. So I got another court hearing with Judge Mark Gargan. He's got the paperwork there, the judges. So Judge Gargan, when I was there, he went, before I went there, sorry, I got the date to go there. I think the first one was the 27th of January, 2020. I think it was on 2021, 2021, I think. And then the next one was February, but I got a letter off the judge a long ages before it came to, we got the, uh, the the Crown Court come there, sorry, the conference call. So he said, as of today, Mr. Chuck and Judge, the, the Chucky, the little Chucky doll, has been charged with contempt of court for putting a courtroom hearing recording, full record of the courtroom hearing where he's made, spliced it with a Cut under the courtroom, which was Spanish court, absolute clown. And as he sat there, and you can see the Spanish flag because he couldn't go to the magistrates because of shit in this country. So he's done that and he must have got off the telly. But you can, there's nobody, they just sat like that, judges aren't moving. And then the, the mouse moves and then the dog comes out, and then the voices come out and it says, I walk free. But he, he was given, he was like given leave to leave that day because we couldn't go on with the case until they amended it. So it got amended. And then we had to go back. But the judge said, as of today, Mr. Cockley has been charged for kind of the full section 921, whatever it was called. Uh, it's illegal for anyone to record anything video wise, camera wise, or audio wise, or any type of explicit recordings. So he said, the judge said, so he's been charged with contempt of court. And he said, if you don't take down all these recordings, in, in an endeavor to take down all these recordings and all this information on all different platforms i will have you arrested and i'll be brought to court where i'll give you a custodial sentence or i will give you a, a fine or both within two hours the whole lot comes down all the daft things he puts up about me all different daft little fucking videos he had about 20 up but you're not allowed to record the courtroom conference so you, the idiot got done to pretend the court uh, and in the end, we've got disclosure. The judge gives disclosure. I've got the letter. War Cry Publishing on it. And then it's a Flint on it, which is their emblem. And Paul Sykes is on it. And it's, the judge said, you have to give Mr. Cockrell all paperwork and all the invoices. He said, well, why is Mr. Cockrell asking to call the court? He went, well, I don't have to give him my information. It's my business and it belongs to me, Brendan said. The judge went, listen. Mr. Cockrell, what percentage have you given him? He really gets thirty seven percent. I pay him every month. He gets the money when I pay him every month through his bank. So I said, Could I speak to you on? I said, What? Twenty pounds? I said, I did a book before where I was getting fifteen hundred pounds a month, three thousand pounds a month a month. I said, and this was before all this was before the internet. He said, Right. He said, So well, what have you given him of proof? He said, It's just over a year now. He said, Well, what have you given him of proof of the book he went? Now he went, what did you say? He said, nothing. Oh, he said, full disclosure. Give me the full disclosure. He said, 20, 21 days, full disclosure. So Brendan went, I can do it within 12, 12 four, what was it, 24 hours. Never got nothing off them all the way through it. They just, in the end, the, the uh, judge gave me the disclosure. So I've still got it now. He said, we can't go any further with these because they're not going to divulge it. He said, I think what they're going to do, because I was on, I was in the conference fest. I was there. They never turned up. So I'm in the conference sort of the judge. Lovely man. He said, I'm just amending this, Mr. Cockrell. He said, what I'm going to do, I find it really unfair because they've not turned up on several occasions. You've been turned up every time. You've never missed a hearing. And you've never been disrespectful to the courts. And you've always been polite. So he said, what I'm going to do, I know you've been poorly because obviously I've seen you, the, the stuff you said and you told him I was not well. And he said, so what I'll give you now is I'll give you a letter from me 
to tell them you must give Mr. Cockrell within 14 days, I think it was, all the outlets, Spotify, uh, Goodreads, Waterstones, W. H. Smith, and all these different outlets, you must give Mr. Cockrell right across the world, every, anywhere in the world, the electronic devices, um, audio books, Kindle books, everything must be given to him, all the, all the data, what you've sold the book on, but never give me nothing. So he said, but if they don't do it, don't worry about it. Because that letter I'll give you, there's no time limit on it. So if it takes whatever, a year, two year, three year, whatever it takes you, till you get better. You get that information from Amazon, Kindle and all the other stuff. And you give that to me. I will look at it. And if I find it right, I'll put it in a small claims court and I'll award you the money what you wrote. He said, how does that sound? I said, fantastic. You know, I can't thank you enough. Um, I just want to draw a line in the sand today. I'm glad you're thinking that way. I said, I'm getting nowhere, am I, you're on? He said, no. He said, so the best thing to do is just move on, get on your books to be given. And he said to Brendan, and give Mr. Cockrell his book back. So I got the book back. Uh, so we never won the court case. How do I get my book back? How come the resurrection of Brian Cockrell's not on any platform anywhere? How come from Boyce to Champs, Mike Joseph Turner, with, with Jimmy White in the, in the comments here, uh, Kevin Brown got his book back for him. That book's been taken down out of all the outlets from Boys to Champ by Marty Joseph Turner. So how come also Terry Dixon, the laughter madness and mayhem, and the laughter madness and mayhem continues? How come both of them books were taken down? And how come Brent had to give all the books he had left to Terry, which was about 901 book, I think it was, and about 150 or 250 of another book. And he dropped them off at his house on West Lane on a Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Friday or Saturday. And two days, three days later, there was another load of books dropped off. So he, he dropped two sets of books off. So just lies all the time, compul compulsive lies. Now, if I was lying about this, he would go to the courts or he would go to the judge or whatever and say, it's lies, we haven't done that. You can get them books in the shops because they were taken. Now, we've even got a video. I'm not going to put up now, I'll put up in it when I'm a court case over. Where me, Robbo, Emma and Terry Meets is there. We go into the water stones, water stones and we speak to the lady there. And we spoke to the lad and he said, look, uh, we'll have to get, I said, well, this is a court, that's the court to show you. It's all fraud. The judge said it's fraud. And the judge said, they aren't paying tax. So there it is there. So I give him the letter from the courts, to put a screen there on him, on a, I don't know what to call it, a thing like that. And then they sent it, photocopied it, and sent it to, how do I know this? Piccadilly, head office, Waterstones. How would I know how, where that was unless I was there? So the woman said, that she said, can you wait 20 minutes or so? I said, yeah, of course we can wait. So we went outside, we got a cup of coffee at the shop. We sat outside, I'm in my wheelchair. And Matt is in a wheelchair as well. So we sat there, he went, have you seen him? Everything he says on the video is, have you, have you seen him? Have you seen him? I could take it all my book down outside Waterstones in a wheelchair. Why did you say that then? I thought it was, so if there's been no court cases, why did you say on the video, have you seen him outside Pokemon? It's the one where he said, I smoke crack and weed on. Have you seen him outside Waterstones? Uh, take him out. I think he said Waterstones. Outside, whatever shop. And he says, taking my books down. Yeah, I did take your books down. Legally taking them down. My books down, you say. I thought you told us all. You never written any books. I thought you told the middle of the door when you were in for £15,000 of fraud that you never written any books. You, you were a T-boy. You're a compulsive liar. And then you sold one judge. You worked for Brendan. You didn't work for them. You got just you got up, you were allowed to go that day because you had nothing to do with the company. You said. Then the next time you're up in front of Judge Garvin, you told him you were, the page was created for me. I'm the manager of the company. I'm a tea boy. But you said in the other one, which is all recorded in the courtroom, says with the stenographer, she sits there and the lead, like the Leopold one. She tape, tape, tape records every tape records every sorry, types everything out. So he's saying the one judge one thing and the other judge the other thing just can't stop telling lies. So he was given nine penal notices between them for not divulging. A penal notice means if you don't get this sorted, you could go to jail. So he was given nine of them as well. So we've got all that for the uh, the judge to look at and prove that he's a compulsive liar. He can't stop telling lies. And I'm not I'm not mentioning his name. I said to the police officer, I wouldn't. I'm not going to. He said, you can say any name you want, as long as you don't say it, just keep, it, it keeps everything in book bars. And I think he's been warned as well. And that's why he's been not coming on saying things as much. But he's been about 30 times today.
Yeah, Trace will let yeah, turn out there must be true. Yeah, well, what's happened is what what happened, to tell you the truth. It was very hard to do because the COVID was on everywhere we shut down, you couldn't get nothing. <coughs> but my friend Kev Brown, who's Jimmy White's mate, he's really clever. Kevin White, Kevin's a criminal like us, fucking one of the lads, went to jail. He got about, I think he got about six, seven years, did a jail sentence, and he became a decorator. And then he was this bloke who worked for the, they come around like governor, well, board of governors, he was an MP. He went, like, this is nice. And he was doing this house, and he's doing all the else. He saw it, he did it, that chappy over there, and a posh bro. He went, he said, when, when do you finish? He said, he said, oh, I'll get out and say, I don't know, I don't know, I'm just saying this, I can't remember what it was, say a couple of weeks or something, he went, would you be interested in working for me? He went, what do you? He said, well, I want you to decorate my house. And then when he said, decorated his house, he realised how clever, clever Kevin was, he went, so he used to carry all the paperwork in the House of Commons for six years, the old cunts, <laughs> good on him, six years, so when they tried to blackmail, I guess, blackmail me and blackmail Emma, they said, if you don't do this book, because we went, we went to Sean Atwoods, he borrowed, he borrowed um, Emma's phone. So me and Emma, like every couple, had a bit of an argument on the phone. Nothing bad, just like normal argument. So she, he borrowed the phone. This is all I know what he done. He did it with their Dennis Powers as well. Sorry, my nose just ruined a little bit. He borrowed Dennis Powers and cloned the phone. I started texting people saying, it's me, Dennis. Do you fancy going out with me? I fancy you for years, Barbara, whatever her name was. And another woman, another one. So, anyway, Dennis then said, phoned his son, went, So, so these people are phoning up. My mates are saying, I've been phoning them up. He said, Have you given me phone to anyone, Dad? He went, Yeah. Him, Tim Hat. Oh, you haven't given him. He's called your fucking phone. He's called your phone. Then we we were with um, my Joseph Turner. And Mike was saying, Oh, I'm getting this sent to me. I'm getting that. I thought, I think, I think he's losing his mind. But, the medication. I mean, Rob won't feel guilty now. Like, he went, I think he's called my phone, like he did there. Uh, Dennis Power, so I went, No, he, he, so he took us down, me and Marty, I remember it now. We went back, I never got it, but I went down the level, me and, uh, and Marty, and tin, 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 fucking, where have you gone? Tin, fucking, tin biscuit. Tin biscuits. <laughs> so we went down, and he went, Can I look at your phone? So he borrowed Emma's phone. So he said, well, the battery's running out. I just want to share a few things on the, the, the post and on the uh, on the YouTube channel thing, where they call it, the pages, sorry, for the books. So he said, didn't people are interested in getting the book? She said, oh, yes, she's given me it. So he went, I don't know what you do, I haven't got a clue. He said, well, don't whatever. Download it and sent it to Shelley, which is his wife. So I didn't know you could do that. I didn't have a clue what you do. Well, I don't even know what they're doing now. But she said to Emma one day, you wouldn't believe how good I am with the phone, Emma. I can take a, something off your phone, send it to my phone, send it back to Brian. It looks like you've sent it. And I still don't know you would do it a million years. Wouldn't have a clue. But that's what she said. I've got her, I've got her there texting it on the phone. So later on, what they do, they did it to everyone. They, what they do, they get in with people, they bother the phone, and then they get all the stuff off them. And then they've got stuff to blackmail. So when we were doing the book about Lee Duffy, it was saying, Lee was a robot walking on the street and Brian was making money. Lee just wanted to be sadistic and beat people and break the jaws and stamp on them and all this stuff. And I'm not saying that. So I pulled out the, the book and I pulled out the documentary. So Paul Suggett rang me and said, Brian, there's only you going to be credible in this documentary. If you don't go in, it's going to be fucked. He said, because you're the only one who knew Lee, Lee Green. And you're the one who knocked it on with him. He said, you're the only tax party ever had. He was always on his own. So he, he would never be, he never teamed up with anyone else, just me. So he said, it's going to be rude. And he said, I can't wait for him. He's on the fucking bed. So there's a video of him in, in a pub where he saw Paul Sugar and he sat with a stinking T-shirt on, all, all, all like sweating under the armpits. He's picking bits of uh, bits out of his eyes like that. It, it's, uh, with the, it's in their South Bank um, commercial pub. He's in there. And he's like that. Oh. Yawning 17 times in about three, four minutes. I said, what's, what's he doing that for? Said, what's, what's all that about? He's been up a day drinking on the stuff. He went, no, when you take the H, he said, that's a massive thing and give away the yawn like a lion, like that, because it's absolutely exhausted because it drained your body. He said, he said, that's in that, and you have to get more to go back up. He said, so you can see him picking sleep out of his eye on a, on a show with the cameras and video on it. And you can see the bit where he's picking sleep out of his eyes. You can see the bits of sleep like that. But I mean, what else? He's got a t-shirt on. It's all baggy. 
there's big loads of sweat marks all over it and spilt drinks all over it. He sat there doing a documentary. I went, look at the state of that. No one got away from him. So he's, he's saying that we um, pretended that we went to court. No, we didn't. And we pretended that we got the books took down. Well, why are the books out? Why are them books not on the shelves? Sean Atwood phoned me one sat in the morning. I was on the on the bed with Scrappy and Eli. And we were watching the telly. It was big, big red dog. Clifford's a big red dog. He used to both dogs, little puppets that, like fucking mini mouses like that. And well, he's up here, fucking you know, scrappy, massive. I think he was about 11 store, about 26, 27 inches in height to his shoulder, American Akita. So he's on there watching the deck. They loved love the dog. They, they knew it was a dog. They're not, they're not fucking daft, are they? So anyway, I've got a phone. Sean said, oh, hi. And he said, uh, Rob Brenton been on the phone. And he said, Tin 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 has ruined the company. He's completely ruined the company. He said, Rob Brenton's been sending him the money. He's spending all the money. He's just been blowing all the money. He hasn't been paying you. I'll tell you no one. He's kept the money himself. He said, so Rob Brenton's in the shit now because he's ruined his company. He said, I think, he said, my honest opinion, they're going to go bankrupt. And Sean was right. And even the judge said that to me on the day. He said, I think what they'll do, Mr. Cockrell, the books are what prices it. I said, it's sad for twelve ninety five, Your Honour, but it's got to be fifteen pounds. He said, "Will you watch next couple of weeks? What will go down? Maybe ten pounds, five pounds, two pounds, three pounds. That will get took off." I said, "Is that what they do?" He said, "Yeah, that's what they do." Sadly, I can't do nothing about it, but that's what they do. I said, "What pull the rug under your feet?" He said, "Yeah, we've done exactly what they do." So the judge was spot on. It went from fifteen pounds to ten pounds. Then it went to eight ninety nine. I think it was, and then it went there. Uh, I think it was a pound or temperature, whatever it was, a pound, say a book, or 10 pence or something, I can't remember. And he said, they've sold that, and the other books they bought probably themselves, and put away to try and send them, sell them like on the sly, you know, little, all around the country, they might have like 200 books or something left. So all the books were taken off, all my books, resurrected Brian Cox, you can't buy anywhere. And it's shite anyway, because when I got to proofread it, it was fucking dreadful, absolute shite. Honestly, God, it's my mate, it was Lee Walker, he's a professional, professional, professional fucking author. Top of people like Lenny McLean and all that. He's done all them books. And he's been given the, he worked for Penguin, biggest book company in the whole world. And he goes to a special platform in London where you go, I think, I can't remember what it's called now, but Lee's been on there a few times with his books. So the books go in there and it's the sense, it's like, say, like three, three, four people read the books. They'll pick 20 of the best books that they think could be made in a movie or could be a bit of a or whatever, a fucking series or something. So that's in a special book. I don't know what I can't least told me a few times, I can't remember it. But he's in he's been in he's been in there. So he's doing my book now. And he's doing the training book. So he's saying that I was lying about the book. So the first book I did was called Street Fighters, Julian Davies. The second book I did was Viv Three. The third book I did was Solitary Fitness for Charlie Bronson. It was sold, made £1.2 million, 120,000 copies of sold. And he said, Steve Rich, Steve Rich interviewed Steve Richards. He went, that was the biggest training book sold ever in history in, in, in the UK. I'm, 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 not, I'm in it doing all the exercises. Charlie Bronson's written it. And I've got a medicine ball in it. I'm sitting at the back with a red and white top on a fucking huge in it. And I was really in good condition. Been a fortune on steroids and gear to get myself really well looking for Charlie and Charlie said, Oh, thank tell Brian. He said, That medicine ball he's got his hand looks like a fucking tennis ball. He said, The size of his fucking hands are massive. He went, Oh, it's huge. Steve Ray, Steve, Steve, Steve thing he said. So that was the fourth book, I think then. So then I did Scottish Shard Bastards. I think that was the fifth book, was it? And then I did um I was in on Richie Horse's book on the chin. It's called On the Chin, he mentioned me in that book. That was like six, seven, that seven books. And then I did one called, well, um, another one was called The Tax Man, Steve, Steve Richards, which was massive, massive amount of books I sold. So I had eight books, is it? Six, seven, eight books, whatever. And then I did uh, Ben Norm Horney, uh, Gangs of the Underworld, Gunderwell um, book, where it's about the 50 biggest gangsters. And then I did, what was the one I did? I did The Resurrection of That Idiot. And then I did another one where I pulled out of, I think I was like 10 books, I think. And I'm sure they oh, you know, Steve, Steve Rafe, and that was called The Taxman of Teesside. So there's 11, 11, 12 books or something I've, I've done over the period. But I've been mentioning loads of people, other, other people's books, just to mention. 
So you said, I'm making it up. Well, I'm not making them up because you can check them all. Uh, you can check them all and then you'll see them all. And the, the amazing, the books, I mean, that one I did, only 50, the biggest 50 gangsters in great British history is in that book, in them books. And I'm, I'm in one page. Bob Brown come with us, was in Billingham. Ben Norman only hooked the seers from, he was in Ferry Hill, I think he was at that time. I think it was Bolum's, he, he had a cafe up there. And I went to see him in the range over and he went, oh, imagine you coming to fucking range when I get out of the range over. You can see how big I am, because when I get out, the range over, when I step down, the range over goes up. You can see me come, put me feet on the floor and the range over jumps up. So I, I was like 24 stone maybe. So you can tell how big I am because you see the size of range of you can eat. But oh, that's pretend that. That's that's a, that's an illusion all that. And the fucking lad's driving me in the fucking deep. My mate's son, Phil Walker's son. Who's, who's, he's, the, he's the third or fourth best surf, surfing, that surfing. I've never watched it. Where they go around. He does that for a living. He's really good. So you can see me getting out of the Jeep and he's saying I'm making that up. Like it's pretend it's like it's like, I'm like something to manipulate the photo. I'm just driving down the fucking street. Ben comes over and hey, Brad. He comes up and shakes me hand. There's nothing's manipulated in it at all. Ben, you can see the height of Ben next to me and you can see the Jeep. I'm six foot three and a bit. And with your shoes on, you're probably six foot four. Oh, Range Rover's at this side. But you've never been in Range Rover. You haven't even been in a fucking. You haven't even been in a go kart. You, never, you can't even drive. You, can't, you haven't even got a license. You fucking talk shite. So. I'm in these books, and then I did the documentary. McIntyre's been seen by five million fucking people. It's been seen in 19 different countries. It's been, um, then we did Good Nation. I did that one with dispatchers. Margaret, I called her, and I can't remember the other name, Scottish. She said, I said, do you want a sandwich, ham, or this? She can you do me some jam and bread? I went, I said, we used to always have that as kids. And he went, I made a jam and bread. She loved it. I made a cup of coffee, and I made him a cup of tea, I think it was. No, she had tea and he had coffee. I said, prop, proper uh, Scottish you tea. A wee cup of tea there, I'll have a wee cup of Margaret. She's a lovely lady, she was. And she said, some of them loved the Manchester lads who they did the gun nation with, the problem, firearms. She said, interview Brian Cockrell, he's marvellous, he's really good on camera, so they come. And they couldn't do it, and they're living for some some rain. It didn't, all well, they have, they know the, the camera well. I sat on the set in there and they went, it's just not right. So I had to get one of these chairs here it out in the passage and I'm sat in my passage looking in the living room and they've got me in the passage you can't see it's a passage you can just see the stairs i think and i'm sat with the blue top and i'm fucking huge i'm as wide as the stairs when i'm sat there right massive and the top couple of travelers went brian you look fucking marvelous he said you fucking traps are fucking they were like near there before he said they look like they're going further up your neck they're fucking massive your traps i said that's with the deadlifts so I was in that. That was a good nation by dispatches. Then I was in another one. What I, I got with them. the one was called Tom. I can't remember the one's name. It came from McIntyre. Told them go and see Brian in the North East because I wanted to do uh, Britain's hardest villages. So I took them to. Um, I went to South Bankfest and I went to Grangetown, a few other rough places. I was in Stockton that and I said, I know place. So I went to this place. And he said, Oh, this looks. This looks there. Uh, I'm gonna. This, this looks good. So I went down to this place, Skinning Grove. Mark Emerson's on, he'll fucking tell you. It's like going back to the 1970s. He went, fucking hell, he said they were dead. Bad. They were like dead posh, no, they swear they were the posh. Oh, golly gosh. They were like that time, right? Oxford, you know, Oxford, Cambridge, like the boat race lads, like them. And there uh, they went, oh, we were for Granada, Granada TV. I've still got the letter upstairs, thanking us. And then he did another one, Dare Films, which was another another one, Dare Films. And anyway, they come. So I took them to this place and we went down this bank. I went, it's called the Wife's Fucking Village. And he was like laughing his head off. He went, Oh, it's fucking it's like being in the land of fucking going back three, four hundred years ago. So there's the last with a pair of red wellies on and a, like a tartan pair of tart pajamas on at four o'clock in the afternoon. And it was the sun was blistering and they run running around and then there's, there's a kid with a doll all its eyes are poked out and then and her arm, the arms pulled off and fucking hell. And he went, he said, fucking hell, are we going to get out of here alive? I see, you haven't been in the Amazon, the Amazon yet. I took them further in. They went, oh, this is going to be brilliant. This. So anyway, they did it. It was called Stokesy, but I, I was going to narrate it. But because I knew people there, I knew people from Broughton and Lingdale, so I didn't want to really go and then say, oh, it's like this here and that, because I thought they might not fall off. they fall off, because it's, no matter where you're from, it's still somebody's town, isn't it? You know, no matter how rough it is or where you live, you can't call somebody's area, but it's quite, quite honest to tell you the truth. 
the main reason why I never I got off my fucking tits on the with coke about two days before they come in. We ended up being on it for about three days when they come. It was fucking boiling hot the window come the window and I got oh boy, you see, oh, he's not in, he's out there, go somewhere. I was fucking coked out me out. I just so I could have lied there and pretended, but I never tell fucking lies. I always tell the truth. Anyway, they called him Tom. Anyway, he contacted me again. He said, Thanks for getting us there. Yeah, it was marvelous to meet you. And uh, if we need anything else, could we come and see us? I said, Oh, yeah, anytime you can see us. I'm well, sorry, I had to go somewhere. I told him a little white lie, but I don't tell lies to people on the air, like, because what's the point? Just tell the fucking truth. So, anyway, it was done. And it was, it's if you see it, Skidding Grove. The documentary was fucking rough. One lad, one lad, he goes in, he, he goes in, it was all shit in there. The log, all the poo goes in there, so it's sewage. And they're in the river, in the, in the sea, with a rake in it, trying to find stuff. Anyway, this old man, he's about 70, lost his teeth. He was in the toilet and he, he coughed. And his teeth went in the toilet and he, they went down, flushed the toilet, actually, they flushed it. He didn't realize it went all the way down into the sea. And he got them three weeks later, come back, he went, yeah. There's your teeth. I found it at the end of it in the sea. And he's got the teeth. And he, I don't know if you see him. I can't remember who gives him them then. Anyway, give him the teeth and he fucking put the, puts the teeth in. He's got his teeth. And I'm like, fucking hell. And barking I was. Make me bark. I thought, I'm glad I never done that one with them. And then I did another one with, um, what was the other one I did? Fucking hell. Oh, Ronald Moore. Ronald Moore. I did one about Ronald Moore. And I said, I think Ronald Moore was bad because what he did was obviously was wrong. But I felt, I felt sorry for him because... Like, like him, daft ass, he's got sort of been a health problem. And I said, I honestly think, they never put it on when I said, I honestly think, he said, what about guns? He said, well, I stopped the guns coming in the 1980s, late 80s. So there's no machine guns in Teesside. There was 20, there was 27 ones. And we got the lad to give them back to the Liverpool firm. And we got the lads to give them back to the Manchester firm. I was in jail with them. And I stopped them the coming and I stopped that. There was few handguns and few shotguns. Raw of what they do with people breaking, like, Farmers' houses and pinching, things like that. But there's no machine guns or there's no loads of guns on the streets uh, because of what I did in the 80s. And uh, she was talking, she said, uh, You're a really nice person, Brian. We, we, really, really, we really know your stuff. She said, it's been a pleasure having you on, on the show. So she did that show with us. And she said, it was a letter. Another one said, it was a letter saying, Amazing, absolutely amazing uh, response from people, what you were saying. But um, that teeth break, tooth break. <laughs> Truth breakers, yeah, they're in the fucking in the sea, fucking going for the teeth in the sea three weeks after they've been lost. Yeah, I, I tell you, I'll let you know, Mark Emerson, Mark, Mark Mark's on there, he'll fucking tell you. He, he's not far from them. You, you go in and you can't get out. It's like fucking, it's like going back to 1930. You ever see that film, um, that Scottish one, where they're all, um, they're all got mutants? There's like something wrong with the fish, it's like nuclear, nuclear, something waste or something, they're eating the fish. And the fish that make them all ball and I like fucking I like that all fucking weird. Hundred on the McIntyre, all I needed on the McIntyre drawing was the cave. The cave crucial. I know it was funny that one. I said, all oh, my fucking phones, this is honestly but the last way he said the other month, and he went, Cockrell never had a security firm, he's full of shit. As if he had plastic yellow posters on the wall, and the kids were pinching him. What a load of shit. So I let him go on for a few days ranting and raving and left it because I knew the daft gun what he's like. I saw I said the Terry said that I, I put that, it was like hook, line, and sink. I caught him. So I come down with that and I went, uh, Sorry, guys, I haven't got one, but I hit it and I pull it on there like that. I went, There you are. But he said, No, there's the cockerel there with the little boxing gloves on. There's the security firm back in the day. I never had these posters. I never get the kids these. The kids never had them on the wall. I made it all up. It's all in cockerel's head. You look like a clown again now. Cuckoo, cuckoo. You look like a little cuckoo. Oh, you're fucking crank. Absolute crank. As if you're going to make up your security firm. When you see me on the McIntyre, go around the places in the shops uh, and get the man's car back and stuff. But like I said, that was, he went, yeah, you bullied that young man. No, I didn't. If you ask Liam Henry, Patrick Henry, what had happened, I knew the man, that was Liam's father-in-law. His car did get pinched. And the young lad had been in a pub. And it was Lisa Henry's brother. And he'd had a bat off a couple of dorm and been cheeky. His eye was busted. He had a bit of a cut, cut, cut eye. I've cut the line of bus lip. So I, I was going to hit some fucking little kid like that. So instead of me, we did get the real radio, did it? And give him a good screaming at him. We never fucking beat him up. So because he looked like that, so he said, Can you get someone to look? 
he said, no, it's a bit of a cheap ball. I said, yeah, of course we can do it. So we did that. We didn't beat no one up. I thought, and then they asked me, they wanted me to have a fight with someone. I said, I can't do that. I said, fucking, why don't you fight a lad who's a friend of mine? I said, I can't do that. I fucking fight my friends. And he said, then he said, oh, wouldn't you do a tax? No, I'm not doing a live tax. That's going to get me jail. So I wouldn't do it. I wasn't fucking that daft. I wasn't going to do a tax on live and fucking go to jail. Yeah, Denny, always my friend. Yeah. Time walk. Yeah, 20 is a time walk. That's the word I was looking for, time walk. I think it's Dragogan. I don't know what it's called. Fucking Dragoon. 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 Dragoon, I think it's called the film. And they're all like mutants. They've all changed with the fish. The fish are full of fucking some type of toxic, whatever it is. Timmy B, hi Timmy, I love you, Tim. Love you all well. Rob Raw had that security card on his gate. Yeah, 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 you're right. Rob's got it as well. You're right, Mark. I give him, I give him a bit of Rob as well. And Tracy, love Tracy. She's a lovely lady. God bless her soul. She passed away. What, what a lovely lady she was. As if you're going to meet him. Bob's with us today like when I did the fucking with um, Ben O'Mahony. Bob come with Ben O'Mahony. Ben O'Mahony's wife and me. And we were in the Range Rover. He, I think that was that was it. Was it was a Suzuki Trooper? No, not a Trooper. It was a Shogun. The Shogun he was in. Coming to Shogun, he, he drove us about and we went over the went over Middlesbrough and we took the picture where the big cooling towers used to be, they've, they've been knocked down now. So we did that. So Ben had come and I got a picture stood here and his mate was from, his, his, miss, his missus was called Margaret. She was from, same name as the other one. She was called Margaret and I'm from Glasgow. So I phoned up, I went, he's such a chick, I can't be name, man. He was a photographer and he was a, he worked like a, like a gazette type of company, like a newspaper lad. They did the book and I talked to him and his wife coming. Oh, was that Brian Cockrell, the man with the sexy face? <laughs> don't, don't be embarrassing me. She's that laughing the red off. Yeah. So the man with the sex, the sex, what was it? The sex appeal or something, she said. And he was stood with his wife. He's, 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 I can't remember his fucking name. I was only a little blow. The man with the sex appeal or something, she said. I can't remember the exact word. I went fucking bright red. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've seen that. She said, you look smashing on there, son. You look smashing. Oh, they're talking Scotland. It's just a wee monkey. I tell the talk to when the kids are cheating. Yeah, so all the shit he's put, what I do is I'll do something. I'll deliberately, you all know I do it now, so I'll do something. Then he, all, then he I was praying about you at four o'clock this morning. Fucking money tick about you. Um, I need to get to see you. I do need to get to see you because you've been in my head the last few days now. Not maybe I'd be fucking in my subconscious and waking up at four in the morning and I'm thinking, who do I need to pray for? Let me think. I'm going through Mark Emerson, I'm going to go through freedom and all that. And I'm like, hey, who the fuck have I missed Timmy B? No, I don't miss Timmy B. You know, <laughs> I go through them all fucking mental. So I did every single one of his last night. And even the lad who I fucking was, I was rude to because I thought it was fucking that asshole. I feel embarrassed when I do something stupid like that, you know. I hope he comes back on. Big, big lad, from, I can't remember where he's from now. What a nice kid he was. He, he trained in that. But he was going to take 90 grams of protein at one time. You can't digest 90 grams of protein in one go. They say about, they say 25. Somebody like me probably do maybe 30, maybe 35, 40. You, I think the bigger you are, obviously you need more. But I think what you better do is maybe have like 30 grams of protein and maybe 25 or 30 grams of carbs as well. Because people, what they do, people, they start thinking, oh, the carbs make you fat. They do if you eat too many. But carbs are, they're the ones that make you go. They're the ones that give you the energy. If you haven't got enough energy in your body, you haven't got enough carbs in your body, I would put like 30 grams of protein, 30 grams of porridge I'd put in. It's got protein in as well, the porridge. Like it's 10 grams in every 100 or something. So it's not got a lot in, but it's really good porridge because it burns very slow. So it's good for training, so you can go like you know, the marathon runners. They have baked potatoes, they have sweet, sweet, sweet uh, yams. They're full of... Uh, potassium as well if you suffer from any type of um, cramps and things they're brilliant especially the sweet yams they're full of sugar so the problem is they're full of sugar you've got to train to bend the sugar off and same as milk milk's full of sugar people don't realize that they think fuck off and milk that's the end yeah full of, full of sugar it is same as veg full of sugar fruit every single fruit is full of sugar skinny roll redneck <laughs> redneck redneck <laughs> he's funny about I can't wait to see Mikey's class. One of them people he's a bond straight away with, you know, he just knows. So, and he knows I'm not lying. He knows for me from them days, fucking film wars, all them places where I used to be, and all the people he got, I talk about fighting. He knows all these fighters. 
and like to Dave Williams and Esther from Gisborne, or you know, all these top fighters and fucking all the ones like Dave Garside and fucking Lee Duffy and Hello and all them, all them top fighters go of, of fighters. He went, Name me one fighter, the, the little fake author went. I went, I knew there was about 40 names, he made him look like a divvy again. And I went, Now you tell me one fighter you fought, he hasn't fought no one, <laughs> fucking idiot. I always say to people, people say, oh, these are bully me, he's doing this and he's doing that. I say, well, you know what? You need to shut that. If you can't use them, keep that shut because you'll get that fucking shut. You'll bust your lips open. you get your head punched in. Keep your mouth shut unless you can fight. If you can't back it up, don't go on YouTube and start talking shit. Go on and be nice to people and be polite. But stop trying to be something you're not because people will sit and wait for you in a car and they'll just, just nab you in the fucking street and, and do you in. And that's what happens. People can find people so easy with these computers now. The technology, what the police have got. We're sat here now, they can be in fucking, they can be in another fucking planet. Could be in fucking Mars and still watch what you're saying and hear what you're saying. The stuff they've got, what we see now, see these computers we've got now, just whatever. Shut up! Good job crying the baby. Steve, yeah. I think his name was Stevie. Steve, yeah, I think you're right, Stevie. I think you are right. Yeah, yeah, Stevie, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Stevie. I can't remember who's from now. Yeah, you're right, you Stevie. Felt like, awful, oh, you know, and you fucking like, ah, oh, because he was on the ass fight was on, and I had to get freedom and get it, but we got the wrong one. And, and he came on last night and he went, Bye, ah, you wasn't being rude, you know, and I thought, for fuck's sake. I went, You know what, son? I said, Really sorry, I really feel, I feel embarrassed. Like, I'm going to tell him he'll be watching anyway, I think. But you can, go, I love that. I said to him, You're welcome, and he said, Oh, yeah, he texted me back, sorry, I did apologize. And he gave me name with Brian Cockrell, he said, Thank you, or something like that underneath. So I went, you're welcome any time. We're on live tonight, so I'll give him another text later on. You know, just I just feel awful when you're on your own and he's only asking questions. But obviously that fucking did he was on. He has big on tonight, that's good news. So yeah, all the things I'm saying are lies. If the lies, the court cases, you just go down the courts, go and see, can I speak to someone in charge of the courts? Make an usher. When well, I was at court the other month. Well, a man called Brian Cockle saying, I've been given, he's been given disclosure and I've been told to give the disclosure to him. And he's doctored the letters. They would have me straight in for, not the cost of justice, for interfering with an ongoing uh, court case. You can't doctor letters in a courtroom, it's against the law. You get charged for it, you get done, it's called contempt of court. You get like, you get, if you got done for contempt of court, you, you very rarely you go to jail. But you usually get a fine or a, or, or a warning, you know, like a, a threat of the judge, and that's what he got. He was told he fucking shit himself. He took the lockdown within two hours, the whole lot. But look at Polo, look at if you looked in Emma Cockrell with Dale Brennan Hard, you will see the disgusting, vile things he's saying. What to him is I've never known. I, I hope your cancer gets worse. The, the, the times I'm laughing down the phone at you, because he was laughing down the phone pretending to be the Joker of Batman. And he went, I hope that the stress kills you. You're going to be dead within a year. I hope you die within a year. What I mean, imagine saying that to him. And sadly, Dale did die. And sadly, did Marty Joseph Tennis. So, come back to Marty about the phones. So, we didn't know Paul. So, he borrowed his phone, borrowed my phone, not borrowed Emma's phone. So, when we got back, he said, I'm sure you're going to give my phone in a week, big fella. I'm sure he's coming, big fella. He said, what, what do you think? Do you think he's called my phone? I went, no, you just heard that story, Robson. He said, no, he said, the tennis power one, it just makes sense. He said, my sisters are getting phones, an 85 year old sister, and I think it was Australia, and one was, it was either Canada or America, I think it was Canada, he's 87, saying, oh, Marty Joseph Turner's lost, lost his memory, he's dying, he hasn't got long to go, and all the evil, horrible things. So his sisters were getting upset, his two sisters, they were phoning each other going, and then they were phoning like, I think it was Marcel that called his, his daughter, his daughter phoning there, and worrying and stuff, and it was all lies, all made up. All made up, and that that book was made. My Joseph Turner written that book ten years before he met the Tin Man. Shut up! Ten years before he met that, uh, met him. That's a pub that fucking nuisance, Markham. He's a proper guard dog, go really fucking nightmare. Going for Bobby the other day, and then Neil, I was trying to buy fucking Helen the other day, trying to buy Helen because she was going to need a pup. Oh, can they back each other up? They're unbelievable. Oh, 
paws on you. His paws are like that already. I think he's only seven months old. Seven or eight months old. I've never known a dog grow that big that quick. Like the freedom said the other week, he said, fucking hell, right, he's massive him. I can't believe how I think Mark said as well. Never seen a dog grow that quick. I've never seen a dog grow that big in that short space of time. I knew the fucking food he's getting. For the steaks, fucking for the chicken. Fucking hell. I think that lad might want to come stay with us. <laughs> so, yeah, he was on last night, Stevie, I think he's called. I should have said, you come and stay with us, Stevie, you can have the dog's food. Because <laughs> he was on about protein. I should have said that, and he's laughed his head off. Fucking dog's got more protein than me. Yeah, you've got to eat your protein. I have protein every hour. I have like half of one of these every hour. And I'll have two proper protein drinks for the, the way I slip one. Because the way I slip goes straight in your system and breaks down quickly. But if you're suffering from, if you're one of these people who train on Monday and get up, say, Tuesday, not so bad, but then Wednesday, oh, and your wife will go, are you all, oh, and you're, you're fucking, and they'll touch your leg, you go, ah, you scream because your legs are killing you, you've done legs, they're the worst. Your wife will talk, have you ever seen that? Ah, what are you doing? You're fucking, oh, my chest killing me from fucking straining it up, or pumped it up. And you like, sat there and she'll go, that's that, and you go, ah, you jump out of your skin, the fucking kills. 24 ban. Did get deleted or oh, 24 ban. No, he never got deleted. All he did is he just was off. But he's back on now because he he, he, te he texted me back. And what it was, we thought it was actually a bastard. And uh, Freedom just took it. back. They timed him out. That was it. Timed him out. Freedom, it was my fault. It wasn't Freedom for I said. No, it was Freedom. <laughs> it was down to do with me. <laughs> it wasn't me, man. <laughs> Poor Freedom. He's a good kid, Freedom. He is. Proper loyal, he is. Yeah, I was fucking, I was blocking the daft cunt, me thick cunt. I know now about computers. They're saying, I keep texting him all the time. I said, well, show me to the cop. Well, one text I've, I've said, he said, he's, he's emailing me. I went, I haven't got, I haven't got a total of emailing. I wouldn't even know how to create a fucking normal page. Never mind a fake account. He's the one with the, I said, Evan's got a page where he's gone and gone, I've got 137 accounts. He's the one with the fake accounts. So the cop, I said, not me. Couple check my phone. He said, Well, we've checked everything, there's nothing on it. We can't find anything. And you're not getting charged for the threats of a child or a woman. And you're not getting uh, getting arrested for a knife. No knife in, in, in whatsoever in the statements from his wife, him, or some child. I said, I know, I've seen this. I've, I've, I'm on bail for him and his wife. I said, Yeah, that's it. Malicious community harassment. And my harassment it was, he said, on malicious communication communication and threats, threats to kill. But the threats to kill were in the heat of the moment when my fucking house was, the house was smashed up. My wife was nearly fucking killed. I had petal bombs coming through the house. I was ill in hospital. I had all the medication in me. I went, listen, you can, you come to my fucking house. Anyone comes to my house, especially you. I'll fight fire with fire. And I'll fight fucking violence with violence. Even, after, even if I have to portray the most violence you've ever seen. You've never fucking killed you on a doorstep. I said to him, I did say it. I admitted to it to the police. I said I was in fear for my wife's life. What would you do if it was your dog? What? He threatened to bum the dogs, kill the dogs. I said, she said, have you got that? I said, yeah, I've got it all. I've got the, he threatened to poison the dogs. We, we don't know if Scrappy was poisoned, you see, when he died. We don't know. We, we never got him checked. We just took him to the vets and he got put under because he was bad. He had cancer anyway. But we don't know if he was poisoned because he never tested for it. Because he said, I was the one who poisoned your dog, he said. An evil cut doing that to a dog, even thinking of doing that, even putting it on her. See, the thing is, if say you say something like, I'm going to kill you, so but sorry, sorry, sorry. So, what it's called, it's called in the heat of the moment. So, if you're really serious about doing it, and you can tell the intent's there, but if you say it off the cuff, like, fuck off, I'll kill you in a minute. It's like, where's our Susan? I'll fucking kill her when she gets in this house. It's the same thing, off the cuff. So, it's just a, a, a response way. You kill my dog, I'll fucking kill you, type of thing. Or, or you, you try to kill my dog, I'll fucking kill you, that, like that type of thing. Like anyone, anyone, anyone of yous, got family, mums, dads, brothers, anyone threatened to come in and hurt your family members, you would have to fucking respond back. You can't just say that, like 11. Even Paddy Conway, you know what, I don't really bother when he doesn't bother me, he says, they're doing this to set Cockrell up. He's definitely doing this to set him up, because he said to Paddy Conway, I've got the tape which I've got that up to the cops as well. I said, he's even tried to get me. He could have been murdered by like the Big Frame family pretending that he'd recorded me 
have you got this? I said, yeah, I must send that to Rob. So he's recorded me saying, he said he's recorded me talking about Biff James Vera. I've never mentioned it. All I said to him was it's been about 1,200 people, I think, to 2,000 people have been interviewed or been, been blamed for it over the years. I said, I was actually in a rave when it happened. Never mentioned any names in Newcastle, never mentioned nothing. And he pretended all this shit. So then he said he was going to call it the tin, such and such, that stuff, tapes, kept calling it. So if he was scared of that word, tin, whatever, why was he referring himself to the tin, F O I L tapes? He's got, and he had me about a year, but not maybe six, seven, eight months doing it. And then one night, Conroy came on to him and said, Listen, I'll get your marshal and bring it on, and you can put your point across. So you give him a chance to come on. Never went on, give him another chance. So he said, Listen, it's the last chance I'm giving you. Either put up or shut up. I don't know what exact words he said. You never watch it. He says, Where's the recordings? And he went, I know. He said, I know what it is now. And I said to him, You haven't fucking got any recordings around you. You're fucking lying. You're a fucking liar. So Shelly then come on and went, Oh, oh, that's what he said. The tin man got his wife to say, Is it true that Brian Cockwell offered Dave Garside went on a fight? And Conroy went, Yeah, I was there. Brian went straight in, said, Get outside, me and you one to one. Conroy said, he said, even though we weren't, weren't talking or whatever, he said, but I was there and I know he went twice and I know he offered him out twice. He said, shut up! Get excited because they're going out. Uh, sorry if I'm not shouting at them, they're fucking nightmare. So he said, you haven't got no record of the bride. So anyway, his Mrs. Shelley came and went, is it true that Brian Cockrell had a fight with Dave Garside? He went, yeah, not that he the gas actually. Is it true he had a five uh, offered there? Uh, Paddy Conroy and taxed him or whatever. But yeah, I was actually there. I was like, I never wasn't in the pub. But I could see through the window. I could see Brian went straight to the table and went out and he went like that with his hand, put his hand up, didn't want to know. But no, no, like that, and shit yourself. But Conroy admitted, he said, No, I'm not going to lie about the lad. He said, He's telling the truth. Brad Brian would have destroyed him. It wasn't, it wasn't in Brian Cockle's league, not in a million years. And he said the same thing about that Higgy went. Brian Cocker would have destroyed Decker Higgy in a fight. It wouldn't have been a fight the tax man. He, he, he said Brian would have absolutely destroyed Higgy in a fight in his day. Absolutely destroyed him. Nowhere near him. Not, not in that league. Nowhere near. And that's when he was sitting with Higgy, when he, the other little one, he was trying to get people on to call me. So then Charlie went on and said to him, oh, just to let you know, to Conroy, she said, uh, on the show she went she typed that thing and said oh, and i never watched it somebody told me said him daft ass she said there's no tin thingy toil tin toil whatever you call it tapes uh brian never did any recordings with jamie never did never did any recordings with them brian never did any recordings about viv graham there's no recordings of him talking about viv graham so it was all lies Come on. So that there, the cop, I said, well, that's pure, that's pure evil again. That's pure malicious. And I said, that could have got me killed off, like, one of North East family and thought, was fucking cop, we're going to get him now. But he was doing it deliberately to make it look like it was me. But when he was told to put the recordings, she went, he hasn't got no recordings. All that lies he told, fucking compulsive liar. And now we say, the day, the police have still come to arrest me on the 2nd, which is the fest tomorrow. So the next day, the other 2nd. So it's going to, I'm going to class April Fool's Day the second when he gets caught again with his lies because he's all seen him on the settee, the Green Parker on sweating. That I've been liaison with police officers and Delroy Showers, which is an ex gangster from uh, Liverpool, trying to intimidate us and uh, give us due lamb in distress. And um, also, I've contacted other people and that leads are backing me up, Junior Witten and all. I'm going to see Junior Witten and all them see. What he's doing in the final, they'll they'll stop the book. They'll stop the book then, because Junior Witt seems a nice nice man. He's just been hoodwinked by him. It's the same as um, the other one, um, Alex Reid. He was going to do a book with him, and he said, "I went to his house and stayed." He said, "Oh, he was giving me this stuff called Parmesan." He said, "He said it was like that, and it was these scruffy." He said, "It was these scruffy kids from next door, and they were all filthy. And were all, all the floors were minging his house." He said. Sitting on his set, he was. He said it was like really scruffy the house, and he said, "I like everything clean." He said, "Toilet, I mean, was vile." He said, "You had to go out the back to go into the toilet, which I know is right." And you got the back, the toilet wasn't. There was one upstairs, I think. I one look downstairs, 
you had to go to the back of the kitchen, you went out, and you went in, you opened up back, the back door here where there used to be a coal bunk, I think, that made it a toilet. So you went in there and it was covered in spiders, all of them, like spider webs all over. And the paint was all coming off the wall, like, you know, when it's damp, the old, old the house is probably about 150 years old, maybe. And the, all the stuff's coming off the wall, all the flake paint's all dry and bubbling off the wall. And I'm on the toilet, I'm like that. And I've done, so I've got, I've got toilet paper and I put it on the toilet because I thought, you, Obviously, when you say you sleep with them, renty people and them women of the night, paying them and that, I thought, fuck, I don't want to catch them off him. So I'd only wee on there, or I'd get some paper, if I went on the toilet, sit on it, I only wouldn't fucking, or I'd go like, get the tap in there, get a bit of tissue and clean the toilet, but when I went on, it was fucking disgusting. At his house, when I went in, it was the first time I ever met him, I went in. It was the first day, and I went, I ended up washing about 20 pots, about 10, 15 knives and forks plates, cups, everything all over the place. And then I took all the dirty washing, put it in this washing for him, and I had these rubber gloves on, and put them in, because I, I got on with him, and only, I'd only phoned him a few times. And he says, well, you won't believe this, that the, the tax man's just cleaned all my house up, I can't believe it, spotless. He's cleaned all the pots and everything while I've been upstairs in the shower. That's how nice a person I was when I met you. Doing nice things for you all the time, but when you started rub, when I asked you, all he asked you for was one thing, the invoices are entitled to, of Mark Emerson was working for the company he worked for the, the, the lorry company. And Mark thought, what the fuck's that? I've done fucking 60 hours this week. What's that? About 300 quid. He owed me 800 quid or whatever it's like. So he phoned up to say, sorry, there's a discrepancy. I've got me way to Oh, yeah, this, sorry, there's been a few mistakes or whatever would say, wouldn't there? But not him. Oh, I'll get it sorted. Trust me, you can trust Rob Brennan with your life. Explicitly, that was the word. With explicitly, you can trust him. And I said, well, I don't trust him explicitly. I just want my invoices. That's all he used to give me. So when he asked Stephen Ray for them, then about six or seven minutes, they were all sent to me. And I don't know about them. So the first ones Rob Brenton sent me, I'd give to Lee Watley. went, what the fuck are them? They're the fucking joke. That's not invoices. That's a fucking joke, he said. Then I sent them to Rob, Holl Rob Holloway from Birmingham. Fucking love Rob, he's fucking class. He's one of the ones who... Really, really helped us. You know what I mean, really helped us when we were down, only really depressed and fucking fed up and getting all the shit that was really bad out of the hospital. Like, he was there, he had my back, he had my car, really, really strong. And he come on for hours talking with him, keeping my spirits up and that. He really, really helped me, Rob Holloway. I'll never forget what he did. Um, helping us by just giving us the, the confidence. He said, man, you're the fucking tax man. You're a fucking legend, man. Don't be letting these fuckers get you down. And I was getting like pissed off because I couldn't do now because I was poorly. He went, listen, when you get fitter than that, it'll be a different game. You'll see them all run like fuck. He said, that's why, that's why he's done a run now. It's good, he has. See if he's getting better, but I don't even want to, I don't want to know what to do. I don't, I don't want him beat up by anyone. I could have had that done a thousand times over. People willing to do it for nothing. I just want to live my life in peace. See, some church hymns on your live sometimes. Yeah, I was singing. Do you know what I was singing this morning? Fucking in my bedroom, um, watching Jesus on the on the cross when he goes, Lord, thank him. I give them for the not knows what he does, but he fucking knows what he's doing. But I'm not even bothered if he goes to jail or fucking gets off or whatever. I just want a charge off me to prove all the for people of the world. I'm not doing these evil, twisted things what he's saying. I'm not fucking texting him. I'm not sending any messages. I haven't even got his number. I've never phoned him. I've got no Facebook account. I don't think I've stopped at all, so he can't. can't Annoying me, so Emma, what Emma does, she dances all that stuff. And I told sometimes I'll bite when it's about Emma, you know, when she gets upset, she starts crying and that. I've got like a, a sister putting pictures of her fucking sister on, like, like saying she was a prostitute and all that. It's fucking disgusting, absolutely vile. And I've never done nothing like that. I've never put any pictures up with you. I've never put nothing on you where it's not true, untrue. And everything I've got, what I've said about you, I can back up recordings and stuff, same as the phones when you pinch the phone. So what happened on the night when the Duffy book was going out, I went, she went, oh, we are doing the book? So Kevin, Kevin, I think, uh, has he gone from the, from Pete, Pete, uh, Jimmy White's gone, I think. Jimmy White's, Jimmy White knows. So Kevin was doing the book with us because he knew about the law better than me in civil case. I didn't know he's, he's done about 17 cases. He's won them all. So he turned around and said to that idiot, the yeah, bacon boil. <laughs> he said to him, if you go ahead with the story, the story I've given Brian, I've given three stories, no one knows them stories, only me, 
my wife and she lives, she's an ex, Carol the caller, she lives right down near Essex. So you have never got these stories of it up there. I've given these to Brian, you know, nobody's ever heard these stories, only a few people. And then another few people told me stories that had never been heard. So I told him the stories. And went, oh, this is I've just talked to Brian Cockley, he said, and he's just given me a lesson on Lee Duffy. He said, he's just come out of 30, 40 stories. He said, why didn't you tell me these? First, I said, because I went to test you with the first book. And then it wasn't until I started reading, got to re look at the first book, I realised how fucking terrible the weather shit. Then he was calling Lee and that. In the second one, I thought, that's it, I'm not doing this. I'm not calling the Lee Duffy family members and poor Carol and the kids and that. I love all the kids doing that. But I got a book, I got a, I, I, I taxed a quote off a lad. He was, he was eighth, Mr. Britain, but he, he'd had the quote was Lee Duffy. So anyway, I taxed the cut off him because he was, we sat set me up with the cops and took my car off as well, Cosworth, the white Cosworth, the Q Ridge Cosworth. And I, um, I took the coat off him, so I gave it to him. Bit Bation, uh, Chucky, no, so Chucky, the other fake author got us. And he said, I've just had a man on the phone, said, uh, he's going to give us a thousand pounds for the coat. We'll make Barbara and Quinny. So I went, I'm not selling the coat. I've had the coat for 30, over 30 years. I'm not selling it to Lee's coat. I don't know what I'm doing with it. I just don't know what, what I'm doing. But anyway, he phoned back up, he went, there's another man offered two grand. So I believe the man's probably offered two grand for us in the first place because he's a little slink. So I went, no. I don't care if you're off me tender and I'm not giving it, I'm not giving it to her, I'm not selling it. I don't know why they didn't call, I've had it, had it upstairs in plastic container, like that plastic cling film thing around it. And then cold, I've been in there 30 years. And uh, anyway, Carol, Edward's daughter, Michelle, I think it was Shell, Shell the call, yeah, she was poorly, she wasn't feeling well and all the shit and stress, all the stuff about her dad, new books coming out and stuff, and that idiot. So then I was in bed like half asleep, half awake, and I'm thinking about what Carol said. And I got to meet Carol's lovely lady, absolutely love it the bits. And then I loves it the bits. That's a good, good thing, people like you, we've got brilliant people now to know what's happening. So I went and seen Carol, and she had the same stuff as us, but she'd had it about two or three years before us. Couldn't believe it. she went, you know what? She said, I just can breathe now. That's what do you mean? She went, Do you think you meant when you tell people the story? She went, Yeah, I feel like I'm insane. And people are looking at me, I said, because they don't believe the extent how bad it is. They went, she went, I'm so grateful. And we went, well, to the Tony Grange. And he was listening, he went, it's bad, isn't it? He said, all I can think of them to are demonic. It's like evil devil, devil stuff. He said, pure evil. He said, the things they're doing here is terrible. Yeah. Someone's getting rich on the 100%. Yeah. Uh, project. So anyway, Kevin was okay when we were talking, so... Shelly went, I'm going to do this, I'm doing the book. She went, if you don't do that book, Emma Cockrell, you remember when you give um, my husband, that little asshole, one of the phone? She said, well, he sent me all your messages. I'm talking to you, all your messages to me, and I've got them all where you and Brian are arguing, and I'm going to put them all over YouTube and spread them all over what you've been arguing about. It was just like... Fuck off, you. I'm going then. Well, fuck off then. Go to your fucking mum, whatever your uncles are, you know, whatever your sisters, something like that. You know, like you do with women, but fuck, we all do it. So I'm not going to die and have a deny and have an argument. But they tried to blackmail us. So everyone went, Yeah, we'll put it. We don't give a fuck. She said, Do what you want. Do your worst. You don't bother me, you, uh, Shelley. You don't bother me any way, shape, or form. I had, my mum died when I was 14. I said, I was on my own. I had to live in a house. I got five pounds a day to live off as a kid, 14 year old, to bring myself up. And now they go here, there, and everywhere, all the place, like no homes and stuff like that. I said, so you don't tell me what my, what, how hard it is in life. She said, you, I'm going to clue about my life. So anyway, she went, you don't fucking bother me in my shit form, wherever you want to meet me. She said, she went, oh, you bully me now. I'm going to, I'm going to get the place. I'm going to get the place. She went, we'll get the place and I'll give the police the blackmail that you've just given me. Trying to blackmail me to do a book on Lee Duffy and they like, called Carol and all that type of stuff for. You've stole it, you've stole it, you bought it on my phone, you've even text. She texts, you know the book that they got? I've got the full download on it. And I wouldn't you wouldn't believe what I could do with two phones and all that stuff. So I can send it back to Brian and look make it look like a she's been doing it, and that's what she was doing. Evil, evil woman. What an evil woman. And then they then they pretended to be Apollo. It's Apollo, but it was Shelley pretending to be Apollo. And um saying, I'll give you five hundred pounds if you call Brian. I'll give you five hundred pounds uh, cash. And I said, get a grand off the gun, ask him for a grand and just <laughs> and do the do the do the podcast and halfway through stop the podcast say, 
thanks for the thousand pound tax him that they weren't quick enough you know me straight away i said get the grand but it wasn't him we thought it was him we realized it was from shelly and um the asswipe pretending to be with apollo so apollo was never there so apollo came on later on he apologized he said i said a few bad things about brian he said i feel a bit bad he said but look what happened in that house when they tried to kill him the man never said a fucking word you never get people like that he said he said he could have got them all deal could have got himself a lump of money and nobody would have been nobody would have said nothing because what they did was really bad to him but he got he went to court and got them all off he said he's some man him he said he said that I've changed my way i think about him now and sadly the lad's got cancer now i've been told he's really poor i hope he gets better because we, we were hoodwinked by this the little fucking little gremlin and he little gremlin little gremlin hoodwinked us so if you're there paul or son we hope you get better son we hope you get you know we hope you get better so we've got we don't hold any grudges i was supposed to go this morning mark and i never went i couldn't get up my back was killing me i was supposed to go this morning then i went to the church Yeah, oh, that fucking thing clicking here, there, it was horrible. Is there any chance you can talk about a lovely, positive thing instead of that horrible, smelly? Yes, we can, if you want me to. What do you want me to talk about? What about me? Yes, 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 we can, Mark. You can, for you, of course, we can. Tell me what you want me to talk about, and I'll talk. Which was he saying used to be back in the day? I used to go myself back in the day, especially Eastern time. Yeah, yeah, because like, oh, so Jesus, we've been praying to Jesus a lot, and since we prayed to Jesus, all of a sudden, the, the, this is how Jesus were. I was saying, Look, we've done nothing wrong, Lord. Can we get this idiot? Blah blah blah. So I'm just telling the story before we finish about him. So I, I said, Look, you know, I've done nothing wrong, Lord. Uh, can you help us with this situation? All we want is peace and quiet. I think two days later, got a phone call. Got the, um, National Crime Commissioner of the police, London. I don't know if it's the Met Office or whatever it's called. Phone said, oh, we, we're now liaison with you. Every 20 days, we're going to send you information and tell us what's going on. So within that 20 days, that's when that, that's why they've come on, the cops. They've come up here now. Uh, apparently, they're in uh, Thornaby. We're watching everything that's going on and making sure they do the job and they're, they're investigating the place why they never turned up at our house and why they haven't been coming to the house and why they let, let us fire bombs up off of the house and why they haven't took the device and stuff. They're in, so they're investigating that complaint now. It take 12 months to set to go through everything, but that's great because that's what we wanted. So that's the power of Jesus. Yeah, uh, bro, bro, yeah. Rob was funny in the day. He went to the door, me. And, um, we worked on the door uh, in Rencar. We worked in Spennymore. Uh, with Top Hat, we worked on there. Loads of fights up there with Matt. Mark will tell you. And uh, yes, yeah, so we, we used to be, we used to have, we used to have some fucking fun. We used to have some laughs. We used to back in the door. The girls used to come in and they're going, "Now then, how are you doing?" And all that, and they were like, "Cookie and Bob." We always miss having fist with the girls on the door. So one night they came in and fucking soaked us with these little water pistols. They're all, about eight girls, they're all from like, fa like factory work and girls went to the factory. Anyway, they came in from Stornaby the front and we were on the door of downtown. Anyway, soaked us, so we went to fucking Toys R Us so we got them big fucking massive soap. Like, like, like 20, 25 or something it was. And we were on the door and they came to get us, we fucking drowned them with them. <laughs> but they were having water fights on the door with them. Fucking mad, you know, having a good laugh at that when you were out. I can't sing Travis, fucking hell, Travis. <laughs> you can't do it because what happens, you get a strike. We did one at Christmas. You can't sing anybody's songs because you got that one we did at Christmas. Freedom will tell you. We've got the, the, we got, nearly got the channel took down. You're not allowed because it, it, it's pit, patterned or painted or whatever it's called. So we've got a red strike on it, a big red fucking thing. But it was, it's still on now. We can't get it off. We were singing like, um, we used to sing loads of songs and everything before, and they were okay. The rules have changed in the last last year, this last year, so they've changed the rules about singing songs and stuff. It's like church songs and things like that. You can it's good, cool, but you can't sing songs like um, where people have written them and made money off them. 
Yeah, so when we were kids, we used to do, we used to get up on a, like say like the Easter, get your eggs and eat them and everything. And then we'd be out on the, we'd be on the field playing football, or we'd be on the, we'd be on fucking go to the swim baths, go to the swim baths for the day, or go down the town, walk on the town, you know, like an adventure, like right, going all over the town, going on skateboards and stuff. You see kids now, I live in a, a street where it's all four bedroom houses, so there's loads of kids living here. But you never hear kids screaming and shouting like in the old days when we were kids. Be 30 kids on the front, all playing games on bikes and everything. All the kids now are seem to be fucking all com- computer, computer, computer. The, the, a lot of them, I think one in three is overweight because they eat them smoothies. Them smoothies have got more sugar in than actual raw sugar itself, the pure sugar. So when you liquidize a banana or orange or an apple, because you've liquidized it in a pure liquid, it doesn't have nothing to break down. But if you have the banana and you eat it, the pulp, the pulp digests, goes into your small intestine, your intestine, your small intestine, but digest and breaks down in your glycogen is sent from your, your beta cells in your, in, from your, 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 your pancreas, and then that breaks down, goes into sugar. But then when you run about training everything, you break, you, you better off. But if you're having them smoothies, there's something like 15 spoonfuls of sugar in one smoothie, 15 spoonfuls of sugar. So they're full of sugar now. If you have a te- have a look on the internet about them, it's a market re- re- market marketing uh, gimmick. Or oh, they're great for you. They are great for you. Even a banana on its own, banana on its own, an orange on its own, an apple on its own. But you can't liquidise them because they're they're already broken down. Another thing you can't eat is saccharins. Saccharins give uh, give you massive migraines, and they're now saying that they can give you cancer. So what there is the saccharin that you take, the human body can't digest it. So what it does. It goes into the small gut and just stays there and gathers more and more. That's why people get uh, edible bowel syndrome and stuff from things like saccharin. But human body, so when you get them one cow drinks, they're no good for you because the one cow drinks have got the saccharins in. The body just stores them and that's when you get your bark and you're thrown up. And you think, I'm out of bed all the time. People have like 20, 30 saccharins a day, thousands of saccharins in your stomach. You can't get rid of them. They just stay there all the time. So that's why in the end, if you're thrown up or something, maybe or whatever, Maybe you're getting rid of them that way, but you can't digest them. The human body won't digest them. Have a look when you think I'm just making it up. I'm honest, I'm not. I'm used to, I used to, yeah, of course, mate. Yeah, you can't sing any, any fucking mad things. You can't, honestly, you get, you get struck. We got struck for singing a, a couple of songs at Christmas off. Um, Christmas, uh, not Christmas, yeah, Christmas songs we were singing, and we got a fucking big red thing on it, that, um, a, a strike we got off YouTube, uh, what's it called, Freedom was there with us when I was singing, because we used to sing, I would walk 500 miles, or something like that, but you get struck, Emma knows, as you shall have, as you shall have, I like that, yeah. Uh, Brian Singh gets copyright. Yeah, copyright strike. That's exactly what it is. Copyright. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now I want to fucking strike the way I sing. <laughs> it's one of the computers doesn't blow up. That was all right, wasn't I? Freedom were having a good song, sing songs, but you can't do them no more. We used to do about every week. I used to have a couple of Bacardis, Bacardi and Corks. I mean, Emma would sing songs like five or six songs. We'd sing Elvis and mess pretend to be Elvis and all that. And we used to have a laugh. What the fucking YouTube won't let you do it no more. There's new rules come out now. It's like when you swear, when I swear. You don't get you don't get, I don't get paid for, I think I made about 130 quid this month out of a hundred and two thousand views, which is what did you pay for your phones and your, your electric? But it's not about the money I do for, I do to help people and my own sanity and you know, help people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, I love the stories about Jesus when he says that one. I always say that one and say Jesus was asking for money for people and say a rich man has more chance of entering the kingdom of heaven. And the camel has entering the eye of a needle. So you imagine the camel's never going to get through the eye of a needle. So what they're trying to say is Richmond's got less chance of entering the kingdom of heaven than the camel has entering the eye of a needle. And the other favourite one is when he says Jesus looks up and goes, Lord, forgive them for they not know what no, not know what they do. I think it was marvellous. He still forgives everyone and he died for our sins. And that's why, why we have to pay homage to him. Obviously, what he went through was horrific. <clears throat> hide and seek yeah we used to play that we used to play that i spy my little eye 
<clears throat> for hours in the car when you were kids. You remember being in the car as a kid? We go like say and I always drive somewhere. You go somewhere like sheep dip. Or it was just like a big place with where you <clears throat> loads of sheep and a bit of bit of water and stuff. You never got you might know, go to the beach at red car for the day. You'd be in the water and your hands would be all full wrinkles because you wouldn't get out of the water. I loved it play building sand castles and putting sand on top of each other and things like that. We used to love doing mad things. It was brilliant. Yeah, it was classic one of me. Yeah, he was doing that man just for me. Yeah, just come and see us anytime. What Mark, you're welcome anytime, mate. There's no problem with that. Just let us know when you're coming up. So well, in case I'm out anywhere, I'll walk but yeah, I used to uh Stream yard tested all so, yeah, we had, used to have a lad, we had another lad girl called Liam come on and he, uh, he had mental health problems, he really suffered. Lovely lad, and I got him into Jesus, got him into doing that, I got him, got him, he came to where I got baptized in the sea and he got the same name, his mum. So him and his, him and his dad never got on. So when we sat and watching me and Emma doing the tax man show, him and his dad grew up together as a bond and they loved, fell in love with each other for the first time. He was about 40, I think, and dad was like 60 off. And then and watch me, he said, Me and my dad had bought a bond as group because of the things you told us. And I said, Look, if you've got any family members out there, be the biggest person. If you fell out with someone over a bit of money or somebody's body, you can't smash it up. Be the bigger man and be the bigger woman. Go around and say, Look, forget about the car. You have your sister and your brother. I love you. Give them a cuddle and they'll feel great. They go to bed at night and I'm glad I'm back with my sister. I'm glad I'm back with my brother. I'm glad I'm back with my mum, arguing over 20 quid or something, or arguing over, he said, she said, he said, she said, go and see them, because they'll be wanting you as much as you want them. But make the first move, and you'll feel a totally different person. Even a friend you fell out with over something stupid. Because most of the time, it's the fucking other people causing trouble between people. I just don't like asking people about money. I just, I just don't like doing it. Uh, being 43 on, yeah. So, yeah, in the day we used to, like I say, kids were, kids were in there more training stuff then, and we were all into um, like, um, football and hockey and golf, and we'd, we'd do it all of the year. The cricket would come on, everyone would get the cricket stumps on a bat, play cricket. And then the darts would come, everyone would play darts in the house. They want to be like John Lowe or Eric Bristow. He, he, was, he was great at Eric Bristow. And then you'd have something like um, the football would season would come up. You'd all want to be like Man United or Liverpool. So we do that, you know, just change. Never was rugby for me. Never played rugby. It wasn't my thing. It was always football. And we used to play golf as well. We used to have a golf course. We used to go on. So what we used to do. We used to nick off school. We used to go to... Um, What's it called? Is it Seam? I think it's called Seam, the place. Just near um, Hartlepool. And there's a golf course, golf club course there in the caravan site. And we used to go and say, can we get, we used to get a, I think we used to get a penny a golf ball, or a penny for two golf balls. But you've got to remember, it was three pence in 1976 with a miles back. So you could go in the bath for like 15 pence. Sorry, you could go in the swim bath for three pence. Three pence in, that's all it was. We used to walk every fucking way. We walked 10 miles. It was now. We used to go to school on the bikes. It was about four miles of school. Because you have to have, you could have to have like, I think it was five miles. No, it was four or five miles, I think it was, to the school. And we used to bike. And we'd race the bus, but we didn't have to drop kids off. And then we'd catch the bus back up. And we used to play that daft game like that. My fucking my mate had a, he had a, he had a, what's that bike called? Chopper. He had a chopper the bike on my you know, three gear thing. And I had a racing bike, a red one. It's just made in that. You know, when you look at women's bikes and you think, why have they got that off there and they haven't got nothing downstairs? The men go in there and they fucking hit the bollocks on the thing. They're fucking hell. Why have the men got the women's bikes and the women got the other way around? It doesn't make sense to me that. Fucking hell. They should all be like that, shouldn't they? Why do you fall? Fucking hell. You've been pedaling like mad and the chain goes and you go, ah, and you run right on your fucking cojones. You fucking scream like fuck, scream like a baby. St. George's Day in London. 
Oh, George, yeah, the lion. Uh, George, yeah, St. George kills a um, dragon, didn't he, George? Yeah, they've, been, they've seen the king in that today, and the, the, the queen, or whatever she is, seen him on there. Told them about cancer, haven't they? See all that shit about the, um, the other one's missus. Oh, she's got this and she's done this and done it. She's got bloody cancer. People just make shit up done on this internet and oh, there's more of this and meat in the eye. Oh, there's something going on here. They always come up with these fucking stupid conspiracies. The, the girl's got cancer. I didn't like that, what they said. Seeing crew, yeah, that's right, man. Yeah, it was good there. Uh, seeing crew was good as well. We used to play there as well. We used to go on the, uh, they used to have a big, they used to have a big massive slides like that and used to get on a coconut mat and sit on the fly it was a penny to go on it used to go there and we used to go to the there was a the bus step was the old-fashioned one like you see on the, the, old, the old black and white films the bus steps still like an old-fashioned bus step all that marvelous we used to go on the buses there but i think they were called uh corporation buses they were like a purpley color and cream and i used to get the bus from town center oh sorry from Greythorp. i lived in Greythorp. i used to get it to there to Port Clarence, no, what's it called? Port Clarence, yeah, and you'd go over the border on the, on the, um, on the, what do you call it, the takes you across, which, well, you know, transport a bridge, you sit on there and you'd watch it going over, and you'd sit on it, it would take you across to anyone in the world, the only bridge in the world, that one, and the only other bridge in the world is in Saltburn, this is that one where it goes up with the water, the water lifts it up, that's, that's a nice place, Saltburn. But the, what the beaches are beautiful there, nice and clean. We used to red cars used to be filthy when I was a kid. There used to be donkeys and everyone there used to be. There used to be uh, um, Emma's sister won it two years ago. She was the queen of the prom. She'd be on the milk floors. You know, was the queen, the beauty pageant. She won that two years ago. Sisters like her sister, beautiful like her. Stephen Ray, didn't Jesus say, "Cross the we did get to." Heaven before money makers, Mary Mary Magdalene it was called, wasn't it? She was called it was a prostitute. Yeah, Mary Magdalene. She's the one who actually, when Jesus come out, it, she was she was there and she was on the floor and they were all stood ready to throw stones at her. And he went, he who hasn't sinned, cast the first stone, and everyone went, just dropped all the stones. So she went over to him. She washed his washed his feet and dried his feet with the hair. The hair was. Dead long black hair. Uh, I know that's I know everything about the Bible, me. Read it loads of times, even as a kid. The stories are marvelous. I like that one with the money when he says, Can anyone give any money? And he gives some some like ten pence. And he went, Oh, thank you so much. And then he went, Oblock comes along, he gives him a million pound. And he goes, Thank you so much. He said, and he goes back to the one, thank you, thank you, thank you. Wait a minute, I'll give you a million pounds, he said. He only give you 10 pence. He said, yeah, but you still got 100 million in the bank. That was his last 10 pence. He gave everything he had. Everything he had, he's given. So he gave more. So I love I love them stories like that. Marvellous. The meek shall inherit the earth. What to say. Yeah, fucking right in the plums, mate. Fucking absolute nightmare. But a fortune now, they're about five or six hundred pounds, them bikes. I couldn't get one, couldn't afford one. I had one was stolen, like my uncle Jerry got it. I think my mum paid a tenner for it on them days. I think he couldn't sit for red car, brought it over on the train. He got the train to Middlesbrough and then he got the train from to Hart, uh, to Seaton Crew, and then rode up the road. We used to live in Romain Park. Bob Roy used to live there with us. Bob Roy, there was Terry Rich, Kev Rich at the bottom. He used to have dogs, he used to have uh, greyhounds and whippets. He used to, Go Robin. There was Frankie Tail, I think he was called. Lived on a corner. He was called Frankie Tail, I think. I think he was called. He lived on the very corner. He, was, he broke in the church and started ringing the fucking bells New Year's Eve. All dressed up in the, the, the vicar's gowns and everything. Like a Catholic church. I mean, Catholic got sectioned. Yeah. We used to, I used to always, I mean, Kim Rich used to go to the, uh, used to go to the fair. We used to go to the fair and the prop fields. The prop fields. In 1976, the prop fields was invaded by fucking millions and a lot of Great Britain, billions and billions of ladybirds. So me and I was skinny. He was about five, I think. Bobby was about seven. I was about nine or ten. 
goes on the field and anyway he starts collecting the lady bed to put them in his pocket and the next minute there's fucking thousands of them all screaming ah and run up there with mom screaming all these fucking lady beds all over the little red lady beds we used to play on there the prop fields as kids and then they used to come on with them they used to come on with the fair you have know, the, the dungeons and all that stuff and the ones where they spin them you know, things i never liked it made mr maybe bark no good my stomach fucking terrible no good. i went on the swings i felt sick went around about i felt sick went in the back of my car felt sick fucking horrible car sickness you get all the time fucking terrible jack jim brown what's my favorite church him uh my favorite player the lord's prayer our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done and earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses forgive us those trespasses who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen and that's for all you on here god bless you all that's the best it's everything in that prayer you don't need any other prayers that's the best prayer ever 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 done the best ever favorite church and probably I like um, the church hymn. I like what's the one I used to like. I like this. I like this one. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. My cup runneth over. My staff comfort and comfort me. Even though I, I can't remember the full word words, but even though I walk through the valley, yeah. So it's it's great. It's like a one when you when you want to die. I think you know, like when you're on the battlefield, that's the one you want to be walking the fight with and build you up. You know, when you're going into war, something marvelous, marvelous, marvelous. Um, the marvelous peace in the Bible, love it. Genghis Khan used to say to uh, people, he used to say, if you not, if you didn't, if you hadn't committed great sins, God would not send a, God would not send a punishment like me upon you. So he used to go around. He was uh, the Mongol warriors. They were the greatest fighters on the planet. They were marvelous, and uh, he conquered the whole of China, fucking wiped them out. And because they were like nomads, you could be ready in 20 minutes and off. You said, get your gear in, we'll go moving in 20 minutes. You couldn't do it. They could pack the horse up and they're on the horse in the way, but the, the balls and everything were pet brilliant. And they were shit hot. So what they used to do, they would go to like a place in China, Beijing, just for to say, right, open the gates. Open the gates. If you don't open the gates, I'll kill your dogs, your cattle, your kids, everything. So after he done that, he was fucking ruthless. So if they didn't open, he said, look, you're paying a hundred million, you're paying a hundred thousand pounds a year. I will do it for 50 grand a year, and I'll make sure you don't get bullied and off and off the Chinese. And that's what he used to do to go around like tax man. He was like, fucking hell. I would have like that compared to what he was. And I reckon he had billions and billions. And what he did is he had, he had 50 troops take the, the treasure to an area where he had another 50 soldiers waiting, killed them. And then, then once they come back from there, he had another 50 to kill them. So that's the that, end of can't find his treasure. There's a bloke from America. He's a, a solicitor and he's tried to find the treasure of um, him for years and years and years. But the richest ever one was Musu Musu, I think he was called. And he was from Somalia, I think he was from. And he would be worth fucking fourth off that Grand Elms on the road. So I think he'd be worth a trillion now, he said. Two, two or three trillion, 22 trillion. He'd be the richest man that ever lived. So what he had, he had salt mines because salt, he needed salt to live, obviously with the heat and stuff and they used to sell salt and they used to have 60 percent of the world gold in the world from where he was from it was in, in somalia and he did all that he did conquered all africa for 22 years i think he did it for and he was the most he was the richest person ever in history phenomenal it makes bill gates them look like fucking they have 10 pence i remember one bloke put a thing in their paper years ago an article saying could everyone send me a pound and I don't know if it was true, but it was right, but they reckon that he ended up being a millionaire to it. So a lot of people sent a pound to him from what it was about 1970s, it was in the paper, and a lot of people sent a pound to the address to him. Uh, and he became a millionaire. I don't know whether it's true or not, but but it sounds sounds true. Yeah, I knew it would be sort of every fact. I was oh, it's lovely. I like Whitby as well, Whitby. I love it there. I like it when the goths are on they're all they're all mad. Jesus, Neil shall bow every tongue, confess to him of glory now. Yes, he's the King of Kings. Nothing can beat Jesus. 
you can't con Jesus wherever you are. You can't hide it. Jesus is on every... You don't have to be a devout Christian and go to church to be a Christian. You don't have to pray with your words coming out of your mouth. You can pray when you're half asleep. I, I do when I'm asleep in the middle of the night. I'll wake up and I'll think about someone, Peter, and I'll think, pray for him, pray for him. And I do it all the time. And they're the best prayers. And sometimes I swear in my prayers and I told Tony Grinch, you know what? He said, I do it myself. And I'll, you'll go, what the fuck are you letting him do this for him? What are you do that for God? And you're like, arguing with God, but... Then the then things start coming to your head, you start sending little signals to your head and you realise it, it's just marvellous. You, do, you don't have to not swear, oh, it's shite. Pat Stevenson made it famous, yeah. Pat Famous, he made that other song as well. Um, I am happy now, the one with um, Ron Keaton's, Ron Keaton's song. That was a good song. I can't remember the name of the song now. I'm old, but I'm happy now. I can't remember the name of the song. Really good song. I was once where you are now. Yeah. Because when you're young, you daft, you do daft things. He was trying to teach his son, don't get into trouble like I did. I was once where you are now. But look at me now, I'm old and I'm happy now. He's trying to teach him, the kid. But he run Keats sang it good as well. Really good singing him. Bloods mentioned them all shining our hearts. Yeah. Yeah, it was good when you went to a seminar as a kid, didn't you? Some of the songs I didn't like. I like one that's broken. That was a good song. He sang I can't see him as well. And I like the I, I like the big fat Simone lad. Where from from was it uh, Hawaii? Do you remember him the big fat massive he was? And he sang on the ch chimney tops, that's where I'll find you. That song was marvellous. I, I listen to it all the time. That Blackbird has spoken. That song, but it's sang in a different way. I like I like Julie Garland's song, songs as well. Julie Garland's marvellous singer she was. Morning has broken. Yeah, it's a really good song. That morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the evening. I can't remember the rest of the words. Praise for whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's a good song, that it is. I like he's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He's got you and me, brother. In his hand, he's got you and me, brother. In his hand, he's got you and me, brother. In his hand, come on, everyone. He's got the whole world in his hand. Come on. He's got the whole world. In his hand, he's got the whole world. In his hand, he's got the whole world. In his hand, he's got the whole world in his hands. <laughs> I sing mad songs all the time myself. Good to wise, work. Censorship, yeah, he's, he's, he, songs of praise. Yeah, I love them old songs. If I had a hammer's another one. Hammer all over the world. Hammer on the brothers and sisters all over the world. I love that song. I think I did some more people with the hammer, though. <laughs> some Trump in London supposed to have been a millionaire for begging. Did, did you know what? There was a bloke in London. You, you won't well, you would believe me, you know, I don't bullshit. It was a bloke and for 33 years he went begging he lived in a 350,000 pound house probably a million now this is about 10 years ago I've seen a documentary about him and he was going out the gate every day and he was going down the town he lived in his big top fucking top room uh bentley and everything he drove and he went every day begging and he made all that money off begging off the streets thousands of pounds every week he was making off the streets yeah, fucking big 300, I think it's 380,000, something like that. This is 10, 15 years ago. He, he was, he'd go all from London, he'd go into London and do it. But he went everywhere he went, was maybe 15, 20 miles away from where he was. Yeah, say it's worth the weight and salt. Yeah, salt. It's, yeah, you need salt to survive. You, you need it in your body, you can die. Yeah, but you're right, there's been a few of me like that. Really yeah, clever people as well, yeah. Yeah, big massive house he had in the. In the Big massive huge one of the big house with a big pointy roofs, big massive huge like say eight bedroom house it was or something. 
and he went down there to Trump. Baby. I don't give them money, me. I, what I do is I go to the Kentucky, you know, I buy them a Kentucky, I buy them, a, um, I won't give them money because I'll just buy drugs or drink. I've seen one before, I bought them two pasties, two pies, two cakes, and I give them a bottle of pop, two bottles of pop, and a couple of bottles of lotus aid. Uh, and he smoked, and I bought him, uh, I bought him some back in, some, some facts. We had another one, but the kid we walked down the street, he just wanted stories, Max, he's some good ones here. So there was a kid, 30 year old, 25, 30, run up with an L, L, and it's a place in Stockton where they ask you for money, just on the high street. And anyway, I always give them anyway, a pound or whatever. So anyway, you can help me, you would never help us. He said, I need section. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm in the, I was in the army, I'm suffering from depression. Uh, and he says, um, I'm in nightmares of what happened in the army. And he helped me. And I said, Are you on drugs? He said, Yes. He said, uh, I'm on the crack. He said, Well, I've had none for three days. So anyway, we took him to, um, we had to, we took him to the, from the church up. He said, We can't get him in here. So we give him another place in Arlington called Whitby Street. And he's a scout the bloke where has it. So we phoned him. He said, Look, it's only till tomorrow you can get him in. But after this, we're COVID shutting everywhere down. So we had 24 hours. So what, we went we went in Middlesbrough, I see the court, we went to Stockton, they wouldn't do it. They said, no, you've got to give 48 hours to get it back. I need it by tomorrow, they went, I can't give it, this was at Stockton. So we went to Middlesbrough, there's a big black lad there, I can't remember his name, beautiful man he was. I said, listen, brother, I'm a Christian. He said, I'm a Christian. He said, I said, he, he, he wants to get help. I told him the situation, went, leave it with me, brother, I'll sort it. Went in, got, got the thing up his nose and all that shit, come out. I give him my number. Pulled me back the next day, he went, it's done. I went, he, brilliant. And anyway, we took him straight over, had to get him somewhere. So we got him, got him Kentucky, we got him somewhere to stay, got him back eating, got him cigarette papers and stuff and lighters and stuff. Anyway, we had to have him all day with us. And then the next day we got him again and we got him to say, the Whitby Street. As we got him to Whitby Street, he, it's, it's still over there where the Church Street went on there, where all the pubs are. I pulled up and all of them and he's a big bride, there's a bride cockerel. And I went, hey, lad, you're all right. Anyway, they all took pictures of this. And I said, look, will you look after this lad? I said, yeah. I just said, he's my cousin. I said, he's really bad. No, we look after, we promise you, brother, he was like big lads who can fight in out of jail. So we got him in the uh, in the centre then. Anyway, he phoned us on the night. He went, calm, thank you enough. He said, I just I was suicidal. He said, I don't think I'd have lasted another day. I said, I don't think I would have touched. He'd hanged myself. I cut my wrist. He said, I was that bad. I can't thank you enough. I said, he said, I said, well, just keep doing what you're doing. We're proud of you and we love you. Anyway, I was telling you a little story. Then we got another phone call, and it was called Jamie. So he came phone to the, he contacted me. He said, he, I'm coming to my show. He said, Well, come. I'm ex army. He said, I'm, I'm living in Liverpool. I'm really struggling. Can you help us? So he said, Come on. I said, What's happening, brother? So anyway, we got his, got his number. Sent me the number, phoned him back. Because we, we used to have another phone, like emergency for people who were poorly. And he phoned me. He said, Look, I'm, I've got those shoes and nothing. I'm living under a bridge. I've gone into the centre and they've told me I've got to wait till two days to get them. And I thought, oh, fuck that. So we phoned somebody down there and got the shoes. We've got fucking, we've got another lad with M and you from the church, Tony Grange you and he he got him in a, a place in near Durham where you could work. So we got him anyway, we sent him a £10 phone card and we sent him 20 quid for food and that he went, started crying on the phone. He said, I can't, I can't, he couldn't get his breath. He was like, panic attack. He went, I can't believe what you've done. He said, I've been out of the army six years. You've done more in six hours than the government have done six years. I was driving tanks and flying helicopters and all sorts in um, Afghanistan and Iraq. I was there I was there for 10 years. He said, I've come back here. I've got mental health problems through the things that I did over there and the people who shot and kids and things like that. He said, my head's fried with all. And he had to say, listen, we love you. The Lord Jesus is with you. He's prayed for him. And his daughter come on the phone talk. She's only about six, I think. She come on, thanks for helping my daddy and all that. And he went, it was nice, you know, to have the little kid. And uh, I get sad when they tell stories like that. And uh, so anyway, a couple of years later, he said, they've, they've given me a place. So I mean, we got him a something army, it was called. Not the Salvation Army, British Army or something, where they phone each other. So we got him this link. Oh, he said, I've talked with my mate from my, I've seen him for seven years. I've talked with a friend. He said, I'm so thankful what you've done. We helped him for about a week. And we've got him a place in um, in Durham way where he worked, went and got off the drugs, but he had to work as well as a, like work as, a, as a, in a unit or something. And we got him off the drugs, so it was marvellous to help people like that. 
if people don't hear them stories, they only hear the bad things about you, don't they? don't hear the nice things you've done. I remember going to a, I was I was working for a bloke called, I won't say his name, millionaire. He had, he was worth about 300 million, this bloke, multi, multi million, right for the government, where he gave you a job. And you had to do, you had to, you had to, it, was a, it was a con anyway, tell the truth. Anyway, he wanted me to evict this bloke, I went to this house and the line was messed about. That's where I put, that's where the posters got pinched over the border. And I went and seen him, I said, listen, you he broke in there. He called it the bank because it used to be a bank, so he's a big bank it used to be. So he bought it for a pound. You know, it sounds mad, but he had to spend two hundred fifty thousand pounds to do up. So he got the bank this bloke and he turned it into a big massive of 40, 50 people working there on computers and that, teaching him how to type and stuff. And the bloke used to do he do that, but he had houses all over. So the first house I went to was just you and two of the lads. I went and got them out to just take the piss. I got somewhere to, to stay first. And uh, I went to another place that was in the uh, Easter side, really rough, close to the door. There's about 30 kids in the house, all the way from 15 to about 25, all fucking rave music blasting. So they've ran off out the door. Anyway, I knocked on the doors and there was a woman, she was like a, a nurse, she was only tiny, a little dwarf woman. I said, are you okay, love? She's not really, she see all them needles. I haven't seen my daughter for two years. I can only see my daughter the weekends, I have to go up the mum's. Uh, the other side of Middlesbrough and stayed there with my daughter for the weekend. So I went to another door and they said, Oh, we we, we, we can't let my daughter play out because of the and the kids can't play out because of the needles and stuff. I went to another door, they were having a baby. So she she's been in the hospital twice and they lost the baby. I'm like, fucking hell, this is ridiculous. And the lad on the end they were trying to sell the house, but they couldn't sell it because it was all all the junkies in the house. So Bobby come with me, so we went in. But they went we went and left there, a few hours come back. Kicked the door, tried to kick the door, and I couldn't get the door on. The door kept sponging back. But what they've done, they put the set E between the chairs, sorry, the stairs. They kept right springing back, and in the end, I broke the door open. And they put the run around, I'm going to fucking smash your face in. But I let them get away, I could have grabbed the couple of But the fear, they shit themselves, so I ran, cock and run. I ran like fuck. So I took I took the electric so they couldn't go back in. And I put the post up, cockle security, put it inside the window. They went, oh, they'll be back, they said, no, the people, no, they won't. Believe me, they didn't know what it was, these people. Anyway, I came back about two days, three days later. I went, can't believe it. They haven't even dared come back. They said, well, not one of them have come. And then he was, sorry, just before that, a police car pulled, a van pulled up with two young bobbies. What's going on? I said, it's me, Ryan Cockrell. I said, I've just evicted these. He went, oh, thank God. Thank God, he said, never stops. All, every day, with either 10, 15 times a day, sometimes he said, it's ridiculous. I said, well, God, no, lad, you know, thanks so much. They weren't just young bobbies. So you don't mind helping the community, you don't mind helping the police doing things like that. So anyway, when I went back with McIntyre, the little girl was with a mum. The pair still living next door had moved out. They got someone, I think they had the baby or something. And then her best friend who was a nurse ended up living next door. So the one who was a, a little nurse, a little one, their friend who went to the hospital was there. The people had moved, the people who had the baby and the other ones had told the house. Because it had been months since I went back. I went, oh, he's out here, oh, here he is, here's, here's Brian, here's Brian. And back, I was like, McIntyre went, look at other people love you, don't they? I said, yeah. I said, then, he said, the people love you everywhere you go. So I told him another story. So me and my friend Lee Menry got a phone call off a lad that was called Peel Street. It was this old woman, about eight, eight year old, I'd say. Her husband was about 90. So they lived in this house, old, old Victorian type house. And these fucking kids, as well, 20 of them all fucking lived. There was two brothers lived there, but they had loads of the other kids coming in. And what they were doing, the old people were going up to them and they pushed them and like that. And then undoing the, he had a, them old fashioned, no braces on. They'd undo that and he'd trousered fall down and they'd nick his money. They'd nick, they'd only nick the tenner off. Like, that's all he had a tenner. So I went round there and I thought, I said, let's not get them. Let's pretend to get the guns. And I'm the fucking door, I'm screaming at the fucking door. That's my fucking nanny, you couldn't scream at them. It's my door on the door, run, run, run. You all ran out the fucking back, got over the fence, got away. I could have talked to the lads there to get them, but I didn't. So anyway, so I've come out and I've gone, I've gone. And so I'll come back tomorrow, see what it's like. So I've come back the next day and uh, they're all there. There's a young lass with a pram with a baby. So we can't, we can't thank you. I think it was two days. I think maybe two days I'll come back, two or three days. And me and Lee went and they went, thank you so much. She said, 
we can't believe what you've done for us. So we've all had a whip round. We've got like so much. I said, well, don't be so stupid. I don't want no money off you. I've done it for money. I said, I've done it to help you. So the old woman went, I know what you'll like, big lad. I know what you'll like. So she went in the house. She come out with a fucking big apple pie for me. I was like, tears in my eyes. <laughs> Honest to God, she was only that big. Fucking about five foot. And she was she was crying. I was crying. And uh, Liam, Liam was crying. We were all, all stood there crying for them. And we seen the uh, young lass and she was going, thank you so much. She said, uh, I, I can't believe um, somebody like you who's come to help us because we've, we've suffered. She said, that old man there, they've been, they've been going in the loft and to shine the laser into the house while they're watching telly and stuff and torture for years. He said, uh, and the police won't do nothing about it. I said, yeah, because they're fucking assholes. So I'll give them the card to them. The old woman said, you need me, pal, any time. Not what time of day is. Even if it's late in the morning, two o'clock, the morning, I said, if it's four o'clock, five o'clock, whatever you phone me, there's my number there. I'll come straight out for you. Uh, and we helped them anyway. It was good. But the kids, we ended up finding out where they were and we went and seen them. And told them to keep keep out of that, that house sort of the area but we never beat them up and the bloke who phoned he was irish and he said he said thank god he said i've been trying to get rid of them for, for ages he said, I'll, I'll give you some money for uh, getting rid of them he said, i said no we don't know money off you we did it for the community not for, for for gain we did to help people but people don't hear all them stories they only hear the bad things about you don't, they don't listen to what the nice things you do I know, but I don't. I don't done well. If I went from there, even Matt, even there, uh, Bob Ross said, "I think you're gonna win it." You know, by said there's that many people. All the Stockton people, and all the other people from Middlesbrough. And that. I said, "There's that many people that are voting for to vote for you." He said, uh, "When when the bloke come on, he was called Michael, really very posh bloke, multi-millionaire, and he got the last two mayors in." And he phoned me. He said, "Listen, he didn't want to run for mayor. They asked me to run for mayor." And then about four years ago, he's come on, he was called Michael, he was a, he was a barrister, and he was the head of law firm. And he said, listen, I'm the man who puts people in power. He said, I've got the last two commissioners in the place. They're coming up soon, and even the commissioner placed the bastard. He said, so if you, why don't you run for that? He said, I'll guarantee I'll put the money up. And then I've just got, I've got the last two in commissioners, he said. I don't know, I don't know what names were. I've done that. He, he, you know, you can tell somebody who's really intelligent. He went, I will put the money up to get you in power and I'll get you because I know you'll clean the streets up better because you know everyone in the streets and you know how the drugs work and everything else. So you'll probably be better than these idiots who do degrees at university and stuff but have never been on the streets or no one that don't know anything on the streets whatsoever. So why not get somebody who knows the streets to clean them up? I mean, there was a man there in Middlesbrough. He had a, he had a shop in Parliament Road. He phoned the police. They'd actually burgled his shop. He's in his own shop. You know razor wire what they put on the fences to stop you escaping out of prison. He has that in his shop, all the way around his shop. He has to take some three hours to do it. Put it all around the windows before he goes to bed. Puts two alarms on and he has to go upstairs. But he was upstairs and they were in they were downstairs in the shop. The police station's running on the fucking corner. They never turned up for five days for that man. Five fucking days. He is in lad. Five days. Then there was another one you seen on the McIntyre. That man had his windows smashed and robbed. I turned up at that shop in the McIntyre within about 20 minutes. I had his money, I had, his, I had the lad. It was meant because the lad smashed the window. His mum said, It was him, Brian. He said, said, Give him a good bollock, give him a scare. You, you fucking little cunt, you fucking do that again, you. I won't, I won't, I, won't, I promise, I promise you shit. He said, Really, about 15, 16, 17. So he ended up going to the shop and apologising to the man. So I said, Look, his mum said, Well, I'll pay the money. He said, No, no, no. You're going to work the money off for him. Whatever he wants you to do, you work till you pay that. I think it was about 170 quid or something for the window. Or 70 quid or something for the man. So that lad gave him a job. He won the shop. And he ended up keeping him on. As he worked in that shop. He worked in the shop for years. So that one daft little thing I did, I got it. his mum was over the moon because he's working. He's over the moon because he's got a job. The man who went to the shop got his window fixed. And he said, the police are a waste of time. I phoned the police four times. They don't even turn up. He phone Brian, he turns up in about five, ten minutes. The job's done in half an hour or so. If anyone causing trouble, it stops straight away. As soon as you mention Brian Cockrell, it just stops. He's like the law in this area. And they didn't like it, the police. They didn't like it, the mayors and all that shit. They were shit themselves in case they got the job. But I had a traction traffic warrant to come with me and went, I'm voting for you. And he had like, what's in the Woodhouse solicitors? We're voting for you. And a fucking, there was even a couple of coming up to Amex place. He said, I'll be voting for you. Fuck, it was never, never ending.
I don't, I, I think the reason why I want to get to be the mayor, I want to cash pinch that chain <laughs> to the gold chain. I'll say, I've been rugged, I've been rugged. <laughs> I was going to wonder how much you get off the fucking money for that, that gold chain. Take it to John Ramsons. I used to do that. I used to look after gold, goldsmiths. Two in Blackhall, one in Hartley Pole, one in Middlesbrough. But it's not no good now. It's just, just it's all gone, they need the gold. It was good money about 10 years ago. You take your, your gold and you sell it. But there, uh, three, three, he's not here, he's not where. Jack Miller, no. Yeah, a lot of loads, thousands were going to vote. It was just fucking unbelievable how many people were there. Standing with me in the streets, I went to uh, Grove Hill, a really rough area. There, it was all men looking. I'm going to vote for you. People in the shops were coming out. We're going to vote for you, Brian. We're all going to vote. They're all Asian kids in the, in the house. We're going to vote for you and all that stuff. And, uh, yeah, it was fucking mad. I think if I'd have been like I am now, instead of being on the drugs and that shit, I'd have probably done it. Mark Emerson, problems stay. Denny, Denny, stay strong, my friend. Yeah, you've got to stay strong. Right, then, yeah, Jimmy B, it's in the house. She, she, she. Yeah, it's nice to be nice to people. It's always nice to help people. You know, if you see somebody like, I go in shops and there's an old woman, she came up to me, can you do me a favour? I know what you want. And the mum of the house with her, she was 50, and she was about 70, 75, maybe 80. I know you still after you think I'm that. You want me to get something on the top shelf, don't you? How did you notice? Because people like yourself have asked me many times in the shops. I said, What is it so powder with now? Can you get us? I can't remember what it was now. Fucking shit, I got us something anyway on the top shelf they couldn't reach. So oh, you were just a person, any because my height, they went, Yeah, because <laughs> you know, you have to get a stool was like somebody get a manager or something. Tesco's or Asda, they always, they always get somebody in there. Yeah, it's nice to be nice to people. And you always be, um, they never forget it. I, I said, Okay, princess, you went, Oh, I haven't been called that name for years. 30 odd years since I've been called a princess. I said, Well, you haven't known she, and, and mum went, when, when she went to mum, the old woman went on the corner and the door went, Thank you for that. Thank you so much. You think I'd give her a million pounds? Made a smile, made a smile. He said, She said, It is nice to make people smile. It's always nice to be polite. It's nice to be. There for people, it's not all about money, is it? And fucking greed. I prefer Burger King. I do I prefer Burger King than uh, McDonald's. I'm not into McDonald's. I don't I do not like the meat in there and I don't like the uh, cheese either. The Burger King and Chase Bear. They're yeah, definitely uh, Manioc's their daughter works in Burger King. Proper meat in Burger King. The one in, doesn't taste like proper meat to me and um do you see that one before in Mexico? We're getting people to come, come across the border, what they call them, we call them wetbacks because they jump in the Rio Grande. It's half a mile to get across from the Rio Grande into America. So when they're swimming, they, they back, the backs obviously get wet. That's why we call them wetbacks. They call them rednecks because they're in the sun all day and the necks are all red and burnt and their arms are all red. They're called rednecks in America. But then what we're doing, we're getting the meat and it was meat and it was in contaminated where that big and everything off the animals they've been slaughtering horses and all sorts of mixing it in with cows and it all come out in america there was loads of lot arrested for it about 30 years ago it was uh, they were bringing people across who were like aliens not them aliens aliens like not being checked for like, diseases and things like that and they were just throwing all the stuff in like fucking poo and everything was on the on the burger and everything was so disgusting i watched the program it was in the middle of nowhere, and like in a desert place. We were bringing them in on buses. We had this big factory in the middle of nowhere, like just not far from Mexico to get to, and we'd bring them on buses, and they'd have them there for about three weeks, and then they'd go back home, and they'd swap over with somebody else. Just fucking take the piss out of them, like slave, slave labour. Yeah, throwing us the mate. Always turn up after Big Mac and donuts. Real nightmare. There was stands at none. Oh, he stops helping child. Yeah, thanks to help anyone. I think I'm going to have to go, guys. I think my wife's going to be shopping soon. Are we ready for me, food? Yeah, it's ready. Thought my wife was coming. 
We've been singing and everything. Good evening. We've been singing. Um, we've got the whole world in his hands and stuff. Like that. So we worked last time. We must be singing songs like Elvis. Has. You can't we get banned on you. Mm. you get a copyright strike. We've got one of Christmas to do me for singing. Yeah, I love making my own burger. You really are nightmare. Stephen Ray does. I don't know what we are. Yeah. 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 Right, can I turn you off now? Yeah, okay. See you guys. Bye. Bye now. Bye now. Oh, my